What's going on, everybody? Welcome back for another edition of the Bill Perkins versus Landon Tice heads up match. I am Ben Andrew. This is my boy, Scott Moskowitz, AKA Hop Grenade. Uh, it's been since we were talking about it a little bit before. It's been a year and a half since Scott and I were doing commentary on the cage. So this is really cool. How's it going, um, buddy? It's going great, brother. It's good to see you. Uh, on the one hand, man, it feels like uh, just yesterday. On the other hand, it feels like an eternity and uh, it was in a different world. <laughs> it's been a time is a strange thing in these, in these uh, last, you know, whatever, 18 months. But it's good to see you, man. And it, we're reunited and it feels so good. Oh, it does, buddy. Uh, this is cool, man. Um, like, I feel really fresh and ready for this match. And I, I, I like, this is such a cool heads up match to me. Every time I like sit down and watch it because I have, I'm a little partial to Bill, you know, with the thirst lounge and everything, but you kind of can't root again. I, I don't know, people can obviously, but I feel like part of me is rooting for Landon too, because this is a cool matchup, right? What do you think of this? Well, I mean, I was about to say, you know, everybody loves uh, an, an underdog story. You sort of, put, but I mean, I don't know. Is Landon is uh, on the one hand, he feels like not an underdog. He's, he's he's like he's a wizard, you know. On the other hand, I mean, you know, kid's twenty one. It's like, and Bill Bill's been playing poker for a long time. Would you classify Landon as the underdog or the favorite, buddy? I think that's the question. Uh, like. Oh, Bill is funny because uh, I forget who it was. Somebody put out a tweet the other day about Bill acting like he's a recreational. He, Bill's got like, I mean, he plays higher binds. He's got like six million in like live caches. And Bill's been around the game for a while and he's very intelligent. He's got a lot of uh, very educated, high level players in his corner. And then Landon is kind of like the GTO wizard. He's making a lot of noise in the poker scene right now. So. Honestly, even though Bill has been given a handicap, uh, I think the, the handicap's a bit big. I think they're a little bit closer than this, but I would have to assume with the amount of time that Landon's putting into the game right now, he does have the edge. That seems like a fair assessment. And it looks like we are uh, underway here. You know, given the given just just variance, it does seem like a large handicap. Yeah, massive, right? Uh, we'll see. I mean, you know, that's uh, presumably, you know, he's a uh, Landon is a confident man. You know, he's he's uh, burst onto the scene and has uh, had some great success here in the last uh, year and change. So, you know, he feels like he can overcome that and time will tell. And certainly he is he's off to uh, a rip roaring start. We are on session number six, right? Today's number six. I believe so. All Five right. Or six. Yeah. Cool. Well, for uh, those of you who um, have been tuning in, you guys probably know the deal. For those who have not, it is a it is a 200-400 game with a mandatory uh, open raise. So basically, it's a 200-400-800 game. As you guys saw, they both started with 40k. Uh, you can auto, you can um, you know reload, uh, top off at any time, and uh, if anyone gets to uh, 120, they will reset to 40. Is, am I getting that right? Yep. yep okay. That is correct. Um, what's up there, chat? Thanks for tuning in with us today. It's good to see everyone out there. Thanks, Buka, for that compliment on the uh, vlogs I'm putting out there. How's everybody doing today? Who do you think is going to win today? Is there like a... Oh, we got a big pot actually developing here on the right. So land in three bet pre, build flat. And I think that this board is better for Bill here, the five, six, eight. Indeed, Landon agrees with you, and uh, Bill's going to take that one down on the flop. Hey, where can where can people see the new vlogs, Drew? For those that don't know where to go, you can go to YouTube and search Bet on Drew or Bet on Drew Poker, and uh, they will come up. I just posted my vlog from the main event run I had in Texas. Uh, I ended up finishing deep in that tournament, but I just posted that video yesterday. Right on. What was the, give, give me the D, I'll, I'll watch it when we're off the air here, but uh, give me the, the overview. Buddy, the overview was we didn't really have like too much going on during the series. We had like one cash and tournament poker stuff. It's just like whatever. And then you're down to the last tournament. You hope it works out and you have a sweat. And man, we had a sick, sick sweat. So we were actually at one point down to less than a blind in the small blind. With like wow. three three or four tables left and we went way deeper than three or four tables so no kidding nice yeah. spin up dude right on so i mean obviously like you know it's just got to go your way a couple a few times in a row 
but the, the tenacity paid off for you. That's awesome. Oh yeah, it was awesome. It, it was a super fun sweat. And for me, like the sweat is kind of like all I feel like I can at least ask for. Like if I get a sweat, okay, you know. We got a big shot like on a, the left here. Yeah, yeah, it looks like an overbet on the turn from uh, Landon and a call from Bill and the river is the juicy suicide king. And now what? This uh, this is interesting, man. I, I kind of want to see Landon overbet. It would be Again. very cool, overbet turn, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, he he's gonna bet, but not overbet. He's just gonna do a nice little, uh, like what, two thirds pot bet. Hey, uh, I have a 10 somehow, please call me bet. <laughs> So I guess a 10 would be something he might overbet. Like <laughs> Phil's going to jam. Jimmy jam from, from Perky. And was Landon just kidding? He was just kidding. Bill's going to take it. It looks like Bill somehow is the guy with the 10. Nice. I like that. Uh, so you commentated the last heads up match here. And I think six sessions in. Are, are you seeing much adjustments going on here? Because I feel like early on, I was traveling for a little bit. So I missed a couple sessions. But... Uh, early on, it feels like Landon was really trying to set the tone, apply a lot of pressure. Does it still seem like both of these players kind of have the gas on from what you saw last session? Yeah, I mean, I, I we did see uh, a couple of spots where uh, when they both had it, like, you know, ASAX versus ASAX and then Ace comes on the flop kind of thing, like they got real coy and there was a lot of checking. Um, mm -hmm. And then the aggression. To, of course, now it's it's hard to know, you know, because most hands, net, you know, needless to say, don't go to showdown. Uh, so we don't necessarily know what exactly they're doing. But the gas pedal was applied by both pretty pretty much throughout the match. I mean, I wouldn't say we really saw any slowdown, except for when they both had it on a couple of hands. Interesting. You know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that's a pretty exciting thing that I am personally paying attention to because I think with heads up, there's just like a lot of adjusting that needs to happen. And obviously people need to play more hands. So seeing these high stakes, like this is super, super exciting to me to see what type of adjustments you might be able to notice players are doing because that's gonna be such a huge part of this, uh, this match. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one thing we did uh, make note of was that um, as the uh, match sort of swung away from from Perky, he uh, Perkins was uh, off to a uh, a pretty solid start. You know, the first maybe 20, 30 minutes, he was cruising um, on both tables, and I think he had, uh, you know, made up probably 20k, 25k of his deficit, and was just was was cruising. Uh, and then he had a couple of big spots that didn't go his way, and Landon made a huge swing back in the other direction, and Perky started mm -hmm. getting a little bit um, quicker with his moves. You know, he started getting a little bit quicker uh, to that mouse, you know, and uh, I'm, frustration maybe is not the word, but just noticeably um, making quicker decisions once the, you know, the sort of bubble had uh, had been burst. Um, so I will have to see if, uh, if, if that, you know, continues. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so Landon takes that down. But that's interesting. I was thinking about that the other day, how since these matches are limited to like two hours, it's almost like it can kind of keep certain people. Maybe Bill got close to it the other day, but I, I feel like in like a three, four hour session, it might be easier to get like tired, drain, start to like closer to tilt. But in a like just two hours, it's like, okay, stay focused keep it together and so it's funny that you say that because oh so we can actually reach that point where somebody could get a little bit fatigued tired and start to play a little bit more emotional than strategic right so that that's interesting that you said that it is a good point and it's not a it's not a circumstance that really ever presents itself for for the oh you know for basically everybody that plays i mean when are you ever going to be in a spot where you're just playing for a set amount of time and at the end of this time that's it it doesn't work that way right like you you decide when you're going to get up from that cash table tournaments could go on for five minutes or five hours or five days you, you know what i'm saying like <laughs> yeah. what, what, in, in what circumstances do you ever go like all right well at two o'clock we're done you know and so it does it does right. present a totally uh you know unique um sort of framework for for a mental game you know what i am noticing here bill just had two spots i had to double check the tables to make sure they weren't the same exact hand where the exact same pot in the middle exact same overbet from bill i actually didn't notice the board texture but it seems like bill is doing a bit more overbetting than i had noticed last time hmm. so this is cool to see hmm. 
Len firing a small bet here on the clock. A couple of eights and a honey. And Bill's going to call him onto the turn. Seems like a pretty worthless three. Why no cards up, Maze? Uh, because this is real time. We're watching these guys as they play. So can't have the cards. Of course, the, we'll, we'll see them uh, when it goes to show now. But otherwise, man, it's these guys' secrets. That would be cool in the future to have some final table replays or something on a bit more of a delay, probably, where we could commentate on with the card showing, you know, the way sure. uh, Poker Stars does for some final tables. I think in the future that could be a cool thing. Oh, agreed. I mean, uh, I, I, needless to say, makes mu for much more, uh, you know, compelling uh, viewing when you can see all the cards on every hand. But you know, sure. these are these are all we're 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 you know in twenty twenty one man we're we're streaming everything's live we're we're watching it as it happens. Yeah, another big overbet there from Landon on the turn on the left table takes it down bet ten into like seven seems like an even a little bit bigger of an overbet relative to the pot that we've seen so far. Landon definitely. What's up, made, that girl? Uh, Landon definitely made use of uh, the overbet quite a bit um, in the last session, and you know even two x plus. Has has not been he he'll he'll overbet almost to any amount. I, we we saw him do a, like two and a half x uh, overbet shove. I think even twice last session. So they, but both mm -hmm. of these guys definitely and you know maybe that's part of uh, Bill's adjustment is that he's kind of going to fight fire with fire and do the same thing. He does make a pretty hefty raise here on the left side table on the flop, and he's going to get called. Landon's going to continue on to the turn. The uh, straight does get there. See how juicy this gets. Man, I get jazzed up for these big pots. I just want to see, like, blood on the felt. You know? <laughs> Rip his head off! <laughs> <laughs> What's up there, Taz, Pasta? Shout out to all the lurkers out there. Thanks for tuning in with us today. It's myself and my boy Hop Grenade here on the mics. Wow, and a call on the turn on the table. That's a bet from Bill and a call from Landon, and the ace of hearts on the river is... Please, An jam. interesting card, and uh, Bill has a, a well. He's going to check, and what's Landon going to put him to the test here? Let's see. Landon's going to check back. He's got a good enough hand to show down. His jack is going to take it. He turned the top pair. Nice. So yeah, Landon's ball. not folding there with the gutty, the backdoor oh. flush draw, two overs. So I guess Bill there, when he loses and just checks that river, he just check raised an eight x maybe on the flop. Sure. I don't think he's just giving up five six. He check raises that or six nine. Some other of the uh, straight draws. Sure, that does seem like uh, yeah, like king, you know king eight something in that range. Yeah. Yeah, good turn. Oh, we did go to showdown, so that's cool. We can get a replay on that one. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, true. Any any hands that go to showdown, we can go back and uh, revisit. Uh, so yeah, thanks for doing that. Uh, behind the scenes, guys, this is uh, uh, the executive producer of today's show is the one and only Fat Train. Fat so, Train! Un unfortunately, you'll have to go without his, uh, you know, beautiful face and gorgeous voice and just uh, put up with us. But he is here hanging out with us and uh, clicking all the buttons behind the scenes. We have his beautiful brain and his gorgeous fingers behind the scene is that yeah <laughs> yes actually uh, exclamation mark train hands will give you a uh, a nice description of exactly what kind of fingers are clicking those buttons also ghost of uh -huh. M. yeah we appreciate you brother the uh the nut mod ghost hanging out as usual and we'll be doing some giveaways on today's stream and i believe we are shooting some models at the end for um well we'll keep it a, a little well, i don't know if we want to reveal what we're doing but there'll be a nice giveaway for the winner of that one million dollar ticket at the end of the stream, everybody. Don't go anywhere. True. I said I wanted to keep it a secret, dude. Unbelievable. Oh, I'm so I got excited. I got excited. I'm sorry. Identical Good afternoon, Mustang. Uh, oh, yeah. Mustang, girl. What up? Pretty similar boards here and ex exactly the same pot sizes. You are not seeing double. <laughs> What's today? This is, a, I'm sorry, this is actually an honest question. Is today Friday? <laughs> Drew, Drew is like a fourth grader on summer break. He doesn't know what time it is. He doesn't know what day it is. He just knows he's going to go ride his bike with his buddies. Today is Friday, June 11th. 
Oh, the, man, the year of our Lord, 2021. 2021, buddy. It's I, I, I've been traveling, and this is kind of like a poker player brain a little bit. Like knowing what day of the week it is, it's kind of tough. I was thinking for a second there. I was like, I wonder what Bill's up to, and like, I feel like Landon's mindset going into these matches are going to be the most consistent. And depending on what like Bill has going on, like uh, last Saturday he had some family over, so I feel like I was thinking because there's so many little things with this match. I was thinking Phil kind of had people, or Bill had people over. So he might kind of be a little more tuned out of the match. Um, but then I was wondering what day it was today. Bill's chilling or like, you know, hyper-focused. <laughs> That's awesome. But I want to get the replay what, here. Yeah, yeah, the life of the poker player we're gonna go through in a second, but yeah, this replay. So it did open up with a raise from uh, Landon and a call from Bill. So yeah, like you had said, Drew, he he makes that uh, that nut shot to the nine. He's got the backdoor diamonds, pretty good looking flop plus of course the overcard. So that's good enough for a bet. Uh, from Landon and Bill calls with we don't know what yet. Oh, sorry, no, he raised. Yeah, I'm sorry, he raised. Yep. And of course, Landon's not going anywhere. Now, would you ever expect to see a re-raise there from Landon, or he's just he's handed so much equity, he says, let's just see the turn, right? Yeah, I agree. Yep. So he makes his top pair, and now he gets bet into by Bill. Of course, now his hand. This is just an easy call. No, not not really a reason to raise. You just get. Uh, called by that which is beating you and all the hands are crushing fold so just a call and then on the river it goes check check because you know, landed hates there the ace. Is. you were exactly right bill did have the top pair and uh, he had the gut shot on the turn which is why he probably um can or no he yeah he he uh he figured he can you know his hand is probably still good he's also got straight outs so he makes another mm -hmm. bet but unfortunately landon has outturned him and then river goes check check on the ace pretty standard makes sense your call was correct Yep. So that was cool to see, uh, just to get a little insight into seeing, you know, how Bill is playing, Landon's playing. So every one of those that we can catch, I think, is going to be nice to get a bit more of an idea of what's going on in each of their heads. Oh, bet on Scott, a keyword. It, this is for the uh, $55 giveaway. Chat, you ah. see this? The bet on Scott? I was like, what's going on here? Bet well, on Scott, bet on Scott. Let's go. Good luck, well, everyone. It was, it was between that or Drew Grenade, and we went with bet on Scott. Oh, Drew Grenade's kind of sexy, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you were saying, uh, as we watched this uh, river play out here, 4,400 and change in the middle, and uh, Landon's going to make a 3K bet. We'll see if Bill's got something he wants to call with. Got a, a flush out there, and that is about it, unless someone flopped it. And Bill's going to say, you got it. So as far as the uh, Drew Moss, yeah, straight Lind is coming up with his own code, Drew Moss. <laughs> uh, hey, so the the life of the poker player you were mentioning, you're uh, you're you're traveling a lot. You're just sort of playing where you can. Like, what's what's going on with your your plan for how you're playing and where you're playing? Man, 2021, just a lot has changed, especially since things are starting to normalize a little bit for me. Uh, I was basically in Canada for that year and a half, and then we signed on with uh acr for uh, team pro and then i came back into the state so to be completely honest i'm now kind of figuring out and getting into this like poker player lifestyle a bit more than i have in the past because i would just primarily be online but now i am you know looking at spots to travel go to series and play i'm doing my live poker vlogs and i'm still streaming so there's like a lot going on and i enjoy it because when i'm not doing stuff i kind of like get anxiety a little bit right like i need to be being productive sure so as far as like what it looks like for me now it's a lot of just i'm trying to balance this like planning trips streaming and I am learning a lot about like the poker player lifestyle as I'm getting a bit deeper into it in a like kind of different uh, sector, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And are you, um, where, where are you at on tournament versus cash? Live cash is super fun to play, especially coming back just now from Texas. Like Texas poker is different. If you have not had a chance to play at some of the card rooms in Texas, you need to get out there and experience it at some point but man i'm such a tournament junkie at the end of the day i just love 
the narratives behind tournaments and the sweat when you get to the end and it's just like there's a definitive winner and so i'm always gonna love tournaments it's gonna be like dear to my heart but i'm definitely getting into like live cash games more there's something also very very cool and almost relaxing it's super weird but you go from tournaments to like cash games there's just like a clear-cut route with cash games exactly. like you chill whenever you're done just get up and leave uh two hours right it's just like this is right. going on you know this yep. is gonna go for two hours and then they bounce versus having to be patient for seven eight nine ten hours playing a tournament it's it's different so different strokes for different folks i think right Exactly. Well, for sure. And I, I mean, I hear you loud and clear. You, you articulated precisely why I always gravitated toward live cash. That was always my jam. The vast majority of my poker experience uh, is in the live cash street for all the reasons you just outlined. Uh, but then, of course, that I also never gave myself an opportunity to make that, you know, that big life changing score. I just I, I never rolled those dice, really. Um, so it's uh, it, it's a give and take, you know. But this is also a good uh, point, something to touch on, which is uh, Foul Shab Geb again, pointing out that that's you know what you're describing is a, a tough life, you know. And he hopes you make it, and of course we all do. And I mean, well, I mean, I don't know, make it, you know. You're a team pro now to some degree. That is a that is making it. As we mm -hmm. uh, watch, I have a question with regard to that. But in the meantime, there's like nine k in the middle here on the left side table. And I kind Just of a nine k pot. It's kind of a small bet here from Bill on the turn or on the flop. I'm gonna see what Landon wants to do. Juicy board. Yeah, I don't think Landon folds too often to this bet. We get to call a lot more to these smaller size bets, obviously. So there'll be some backdoor floats, any pairs calling. But what I'm mostly curious about, because we haven't been seeing a lot of these smaller bets, is what Bill is at betting small with here. Because I think a lot of his sets to pairs over pairs and stuff like that get to be bet bigger on this board. Mm -hmm. Sure. The turn so this may just be one of his bluffs. Yeah, well, it does go check check on the turn. So very possible or someone's getting coy with and that's a real small bet again here from Bill. And uh, it's good enough. Whatever Landon had it, he didn't have much and Bill's going to take it down there. Nice little uh, 13k and change hadn't up that stack approaching 50k uh so what i was going to ask dude was um the uh the, the sort of mental game because that is a hard life even even once you start to experience some success and you, you've signed on with acr uh and now you're naturally your sort of wiring um is is chill uh, you know anybody that knows you and has interacted with you or watched you knows that you, you you just are kind of a chill calm guy by your nature so i'm sure that's helpful for managing the toughness that is that the life you're describing. You know, how much do you rely on you just sort of being chilled out and able to deal with the swings and the mental Im impact versus how much do you do you work on it given that your nature is kind of chill anyway? Uh, I think I've kind of been blessed with a bit of a like calm, chill spirit, right? But I have gone through like tilty, like, I almost want to say anger stages like in my the early part of my poker career in like 2010 2011 when I had like fully committed like okay I need to know if I can make it in this industry uh, I remember I went through a time where I like learned what variance was and I, I would like lose a pot or a few pots in a row and my face would just like turn into fire I could feel it like fiery red like I just wanted to explode I've never broke a mouse or a keyboard or anything like that but it's something I think that even somebody as chill as me has to like experience and go through you have to learn how to deal with your emotions and almost in a weird way this is i feel like one of the biggest challenges in poker is learning how to control and almost dumb down your emotions but at the same time still take in and celebrate the high moments like it's a very interesting thing and i think honestly for me to be to this point i had to figure out my mental game my emotions like find that balance which i'm still trying to i feel like calibrate that but there's there's luck involved then you really i feel like in this game and we see a lot of examples of that like landon here for instance 22 years old playing you know millionaire bill here in this huge heads up match i do think that ultimately at the end of the day there is a lot of work that needs to go into being good and surviving and making it in poker along with a little bit of luck.
Sure. Well, and I think what you described there is uh, is really common, which is I think a lot of people, probably myself included, hate losing more than we like winning. You know, <laughs> losing some, losing a, a pot or a whatever a tournament, a stack. You know, is the 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 bad feeling is badder then the good feeling of scooping something up is good. Um, and, you know, if you if you have, I don't know, you think it's fair to say most people experience it that way? Maybe I'm projecting. No, I, I, I think that's pretty accurate. Like we, everybody remembers their worst beats, but how, you know, we don't remember when we like put that mega bad beat on somebody else. Like right, forget right. about that. Yeah, exactly. You know? maybe, maybe maybe it's because just like, you know, as, as competitive uh, you know, gamer minded people that the poker world is made of, or, you know, at, at least by people who play with regularity or tuning into a stream like this, it's just the sort of nature of the beast. Like, you know, you, you sort of expect to win. I expect to win every hand, you know, otherwise, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, we got a big pot on the right here. 13 kizzles. It's going to go check, check and bill. With the uh, ace bird, going to take that one down. I wonder if Landon just had the king. Pair versus pair seems like a reasonable check-check spot on the river. Yep. For sure, uh, I agree. Bill probably could have bet that ace there, I would imagine. Was he in position? He was, yeah. Uh, Buka, winning a tournament is way more memorable than losing. Okay, yeah, yes, I will give you that. If you do find a way to scoop a tournament, yes, that will be uh, among your most memorable memories uh, from your time in poker. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I think we're more really talking about the, the sort of day-to-day, pot-to-pot, bet-to-bet. Yeah, for sure. Managing your emotions in real time is difficult. Playing in real time is, is super challenging. Like... I know going over hand histories and, and things like that, it's like, okay, you can see clearly like what to do, what you should have done. But being able to execute in real time is also a huge thing in poker that I don't think we really talk about enough because you could go through a training site, hand history, get coaching, and people can seem like, oh, wow, this person really knows the game. But, uh, you know, being able to master your mental game and in-game execution is, is huge for not only poker, any like sport, anything you really do in life, I feel like. And we do have a check from Bill here on the river, just short of 11K in the middle. And Landon, who I believe just bet turn and got called, um, is, is going to bet again here on the river. And does Bill have something good enough to look him up? Raise, Bill. Chat wants a raise. <laughs> just whatever you got, just raise. River raises work so often. Yeah. <coughs> uh, okay, okay. Bless you, buddy. Thank you. And uh, Bill does give give the pot there to Landon. Says, you got it. What handicap is Pert getting reverse? Uh, I, it's, I forget. What is the exact uh, number? Do you know? Seven, 720K. There it is. So, yeah, Landon has to beat Bill by more than 720k in this match and it's been hovering uh, I think it's they haven't gone for like three three buy-ins uh, as far as Bill being down. Bill's down about a buy-in and a half right now you about a half a buy-in today yes sir and you do see the uh, you know in the, in the bottom left corner there that is a real time updater um, for what's going on, not just in this session, but uh, overall. So we're only, what is it? They're playing 20,000 hands, so we're about 10% done. Yep, correct. 20,000 hands. Big handicap. I know there's, I can only imagine how much money in side bets is on this match. It's uh, very cool, interesting. And you know how the high stakes poker community gets. Once there's, especially when Bill's involved, you know, it's like how... Just, I mean, I'm I'm in to like betting all these heads up matches and stuff like that too. I don't have Bill money or some of these other guys' money, but there's got to be millions in side bets on this. Oh, match. really? You think that much? Yes, for sure. Wow, cool. Between some of the high stakes guys, there's for sure millions in side bets on this match. Damn, dude. I would say get me in on that, but uh, I don't think anyone's gonna want to be like twenty bucks, dude. Give me two to one. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, that's super exciting. High stakes poker community is very, very, uh, it's fun. You know what I was thinking of the other day, Scott, actually? Do you remember those old school uh, high stakes railing that people would do on full tilt, the nosebleeds and all of that? Sure. That, yes. dis that disappeared for a while. And then just since the pandemic happened, uh, it started to come back a little bit more and more. And I feel like, you know, we're getting back to this point where we're able to like sweat these high stakes games much more regularly. And it feels like there's like a resurgence happening. That's interesting. It's like a, like just a product of more people being in, at home in front of screens or what? Yeah, I think so. And I also think that GG Poker started to bring back some like high stakes cash tables. People started to get a bit more uh, excited on that during the pandemic. ACR blew up massively. Uh, I can remember pre-pandemic when we weren't really able to get too many, for instance, this is something that I connected with, like satellites running on ACR. But since in the last two years now, just like really a lot of like high stakes games now, satellites, like all of the things since, like you said, a lot of people have gotten back into online poker because everybody was forced inside. There's this like boom again. And it's really cool for me to see because I didn't really get to experience, well, we got a massive pot on yeah, the Yeah, we sure do. So this this was a, um, a uh, what was it? A bet and a call on the flop. Now another bet here from Perky on the turn and another call from Landon and Perkins has less than half pot and he does jam. Oh. And uh, we're gonna see, we got a set versus set Kings. Set threes, Landon. And Landon finds a way to bang off a three on the flop and Perkins can't give up the Kings, of course. And man, we're gonna, we're gonna replay that hand here momentarily, but that's a unfortunate cooler for poor Bill on a board that looks real, real safe for two Kings. Yeah, poor Bill, right chat? I know some, some people in the chat are like, poor Bill, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not have probably a phrase he's too used to hearing in his adult life. Oh, poor you. You yeah. know, I heard yeah. you had to downgrade from a 120 foot yacht to an 80 footer. Man, it's pff, life is rough. <sighs> uh, Sucks. But honestly, of course, you know, does it really matter the, the rest of the circumstances of your life when you're in a moment like that? It just sucks, dude. You just got cooler. It's, it's brutal. For sure. The competitive side of Bill, Bill's super competitive for sure. He, he feels that. A hundred percent. And I mean, that's what's going to drive this whole match here because the money for, I don't know how much skin Landon has in the game here, but I'm assuming that, you know, Bill is just fully invested himself in this. Landon has uh, a certain uh, percent of skin in the game, but the money to Bill doesn't matter as much to Landon. But still, I think that the competitiveness between these two is yeah. what's really going to drive you know, the action, the results, and, and the uh, desire to stay focused on playing well. 100%. He does make a uh, pot size bet here on the flop, or, or sorry, on the on the river, and he gets uh, jammed on again by landing a huge jam. This is a huge jam. Let's go chat. Come a on, huge Bill. huge jam. Bill's got and something. He, he potted the river. Yeah. And Landon is uh, saying, I'm full up. Boat's full, bitch. Uh, presumably, that's what this bet is supposed to mean. You would think so. Maybe, uh, what straight do we have out there? You know, maybe there could be a cool bluff here from Landon with just an 8x blocking top boat, second top boat. And he's going to get called, and he does oh. have it. Unbelievable. He's six is full of eights, and Perkins has a six. I wow. yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, and and you know, I mean, who can blame Perkins has to take a breather there after just two brutal spots in a row. Yeah, that was I, that I, was pretty I, sick dude. there. So chat, for those of you who don't know, the reason that they are resetting this table on the left is because they have agreed that any time that they go over 300 big blinds, they're going to reset stacks at a new table because uh Bill says that he has primarily only studied 100 big blinds, so they're both like, okay, cool. When we get up to 120K, we're going to just reset the table. So here's the Kings replay. This is an exciting one. This is the first huge pot prior to that last one you saw. Yeah, Landon opened up, and of course, Bill three bet him, and uh, Landon called with his pair, trying to make himself a three, and he does. 
And of course, Bill uh, thinks that flop is very good for him. It almost always is. And Landon, with just the call on the flop, turn is still looking. God, does that board look safe for Kings? You know, oh, yeah. Landon just has like two jacks or two tens, you know? Um, and then a big bet and a call on the turn and maybe maybe ace, I don't know, ace queen seems thin. I wonder what Bill's thinking he's got at this, Landon's got at this point. And uh, yeah, Bill just Bill just value bet all not. three streets and uh, Landon's channel, you know, he just, he just made the super disguise set. Yeah, for sure. That's an amazing feeling flopping a set. Uh, but Landon's got to call a six on the flop. Obviously, Landon's got to call any pair draw on the flop. The turn comes a queen, you know, bills it, it, that that kind of just like plays out the way it's supposed to play out because Landon can't fold that turn with any pair really and draw. And when it gets to the river there, Bill for sure thinks he, he's good. And Landon played it well, just calling not raising at any point knowing that bill will continue to bet in a good amount of situations so i think that was honestly just a good hand by both of them yeah and you know heads up there's just not really a whole lot you can do you know the hand just kind of plays not plays itself but something in that ballpark you know you got an over pair for some bottom, a little mini set and the board you know no straighty flushy nonsense it's just a just a cooler for bill and then two hands later he gets cooler again maybe even a little more epically this time but both both spots are, are, are just really brutal for, for bill i mean i mean i don't know is there a universe where you can fold that river heads up i mean you do lose to some straights and uh of course you know better sixes but dude you have you have a six like it's just a it's just a cooler I, we'll get a yeah. replay on that other hand uh, here in a moment as well we got another massive pot on the right here too 32 kizzles in the middle 27k behind for bill I think we're going to see a jam or a check. To my knowledge, it would be surprising to see a small bet. Okay, so a big bet here. Another massive pot. The boys are going at it. This is what we want to see. Uh, but as far as that, uh, here we go. We got it. Boom. This hand right here. Scott was like, on the river here when we get, we'll uh, kind of discuss whether or not we can get away from it or not. So Bill opens and Landon calls and uh, Bill makes himself a bad gut shot and middle pair. And Landon here had six, eight, he flopped top two. And then the open ender for Bill on the turn and along with that six. And did the flop go check, check? It did. The flop mm -hmm. went check, check. Okay, yep. so tricky. Um, it's interesting that Landon doesn't, well, I don't know. I mean, that board kind of is weird for six, eight. You know, there's a lot of turns we hate. And then here, that Bill bets the river when he makes his third six, and he somehow gets raised, and what a freaking spot. Oh, my God. Gross. Yep, super gross. Especially the way, so the way Landon played his hand, I think it is difficult for Bill to get away from a six there, knowing Landon is capable. Landon has already set the tone and told Bill in earlier matches that he will bluff all in with nothing. He will, he will attack. Bill knows that. So... Uh, I don't think Bill can fold versus Landon, but in some other games, I do think when we bet pot on the river, we can fold versus some players who basically would not be bluffing often or maybe ever. So yeah, in, in, in these this game here, you're just not getting away from it. But I think there's other games for sure where we bet pot on the river, it's going to drastically reduce the frequency that anybody, you know, population, you know, playing less than $200 buy-ins online people are going to be bluffing so here though it's just yeah yeah that's like, the thing it's like you know you mentioned uh 8x as like top boat blocker is a, a, a something that Landon might make that move with I mean like you said you're just going to see a call from 8x 145 percent of the time in any other circumstance and people will just call they have top hair you know I, I don't even know really even in these circumstances that Landon is making that move with 8x I would expect him to have two freaking blockbuster cards and make that move or a boat mm -hmm. but 8x man even Landon I don't know dude I I just don't see it I, I just feel like he would call in that spot and and Bill would take him you know, take him down with the three sixes. But like you said, we, we just don't really know because Landon is clearly capable of doing whatever with any two Costco cards on the river. And the ACR yep. show, yeah, I know large Farvey. Yeah, yeah. Train is with us as usual. He's behind the scenes, clicking the buttons and, and uh, spinning the levers. And uh, the ACR show will return uh, as normal as this match um, 
allows for. We, you know, we just kind of get the word when these will be going live. But the ACR show is on its usual schedule Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon under uh, most circumstances. Today, though, we're watching these high rollers go at it. But yeah, dude, sick hand. Very sick, very sick. And I agree with everything you said there. This is very high level poker going on. So yeah. for uh, us to kind of get in without seeing the cards, it's going to be difficult because there's, there's a lot of high level things going on here. Uh, Knight of Flight, how much did they bet on the side? I am not sure that that has been made public. I don't know personally. So I'm guessing that there is not necessarily between Landon and Bill, but between people in the high stakes community outside of this match that there's millions in side bets. Is this the torching cash, cash uh, portion of the show, uh, Nucifer? Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, every single hand. Uh, this is uh, torching cash. We're just missing some uh, fiery emotes. Maybe Train can hook up something at some point. Oh, no, actually, that's not true. No, the transition screen is nice and fiery. It's a bomb! Buddy, this is a big... Uh, Bill's down currently 154K. This might be close to the most that I've seen him down. And if you think about that, we're only 2,000 hands in, a little over. They're playing 20,000 hands total. This is, Landon can go on a run and really like the 720K handicap is not as big as it is, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I guess, it, it it is a lot though. I mean- I'm, It's so uh, much. Yeah. I mean, hey, you know what? If we're gonna make bottom set over over pair and uh, boat over trips, then actually it seems a little low. Yeah. So do you think, uh, so you have a lot of uh, primarily cash game experience. I think heads up is a lot of people are gonna have a little bit more limited experience. But let's say, Scott, that your bill at this point you know, we got another hour, 45 minutes or so, or 15, something like that in today's match. But are you feeling the pain at this point? You know, being down uh, two buy-ins today already, or you think Bill kind of keeps together? What do you think? I mean, you know, I'm gonna go with the former, you know, I, especially given the nature of those two big pots, you know, he A, overall on the challenge, you know, we're already in the red. And it just, I mean, I know for me, it would certainly be, and I'm going to say for Bill, too, it's got to get to you a little bit where you're like, dude, I mean, they both have to go in Landon's direction. He has to cooler me two times in a row. Like, mm -hmm. aren't I supposed to be on the good end of one of those? So, yeah. I mean, man, I, I because you, you get to a certain point where you're like, OK, what the hell am I supposed to do? What's my play? <laughs> you know, uh, so I, I, I think the frustration has got to be got to be a factor. It's a man. I it, can't it, imagine the mental game it would take to not have that. Buddy, we got a lot on the table here. We're going to see if, if uh, this might be, this could be it right here. Bill loses this. Maybe if he was close to like getting a little tilted, like maybe this is it. Okay, he wins the one on the right. He does. Okay, so that, that, but you know what? You're right. It does, and that, a spot like that, you know, maybe you, you can have that evaporate real quick if you just get one or two of those in your pocket and you just got one. It's crazy how that works, isn't it? Like you lose those two big pots and then it, we could potentially... Uh, start to go into the dumps in our mindset a little bit. I think it's not difficult, but then you win a big pot and all of a sudden you're just like removed from it. It's like, we're such emotional beings, man. Yeah, I know, man. If only, you know, what was uh, Helmuth's uh, famous quote from back in the day? Like if it wasn't for luck, I would win all the time. If I just didn't, you know, if I could just uh, kill, you know, basically get like a lobotomy, kill my emotions. I think that would actually go a much, much further to having uh, more more consistent wins, you know? Yeah. The emotions are just, yeah. they just get in your way. You, you, you shove a stick into your own bicycle spokes. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Lonkar? Good to see you, brother. We got our boy Lonkar in the chat. Reminder, if you guys are into home games, so today's Friday. Scott, thank you for that earlier. Uh, <laughs> usually it is lit with Lonkar on Friday nights, but it is going to be Saturday night this week, 8 p.m. PST, uh, 11 p.m. EST, ETS, EDT, whatever whatever the right way to say that is. And what is what is it again, Lon Carr? Is it that you, you do a shot every time you're all in? Or there's some, I forget the circumstance where Lon Carr does shots, but you can hang and uh, sip some whiskey with your boy Lon Carr. Twitch.tv slash Lon Carr Poker. Great home game. 
What's up there, Large Farm? I'm telling your family you said that tonight. I'm telling them. Big MMA fights tomorrow, by the way. Side note, I'm excited for... I don't know who watches uh, the UFC stuff, but I'm excited for tomorrow. I might have some whiskey, as Scott said. Are you uh, you gonna you gonna you got some some uh, some bets going on the fights or what? I think I'm gonna put some down tonight. Yeah, I'm man, I'm so bad at sports betting, but I do like the sweat like a little bit, you know. So I might put a little bit little down on it. How about you? You know, I've never really been much of a uh, um, a fight boxing MMA guy. I, I hate to not be able to go with you on this one, but I'm I just don't really follow it. Yeah, no, I don't blame it. It's even though I think there's a little bit of a crossover I'm noticing in the last couple of years with poker and, you know, MMA, we've even we've even seen uh, poker sites get like uh, involved, you know, I've seen like poker sites on mats, bars, MMA fights. So I think that there is a bit of crossover, but definitely, definitely not for everyone. There, there does seem to be some crossover. I, I noticed it especially from, you know, all the hours spent at the casino cash game tables where, you know, there's 20,000 TVs on the wall. And so often they're playing, you know, fights. And uh, I always was like, man, you know, here I am. I, I'm like compulsively looking at the screen. I don't want to see this person's nose getting broken in 85 places, but I, it, has been, <laughs> it has been shoehorned into my mind. Thanks a lot, casino management. But clearly there are a lot of people in the room that want to see it. Oh, for sure, yeah. I, I'm one of them. I used to, man, when did I get into uh mma stuff I can't, I can't even remember when i got into it but i remember when i first watched it i'm just sitting there like that would suck if that was me but it's not so this is amazing right <laughs> yeah okay yes you know what man uh, my my you, i can't remember if we had this conversation but uh my first ever gig in the sort of radio broadcast world was working on the radio show love line back in the day uh doing the board up in santa barbara uh, for the station there, and I don't know if you remember Love Line uh, with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla, but there was a, there was callers on that show that you know, oh boy, did they have problems, much bigger problems really? than I had in my oh yeah, you know, drug addiction this and abuse that. That was kind of the 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 theme of the the show over the years, uh, and I always just remember like maybe that was what drew me to that show so much was like I just kept going like oh thank God this isn't me, you know, like I'm observing yeah. it and I'm watching it and I'm just thinking oh man I'm glad that ain't me. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. I totally feel that, I totally feel that. Uh, Buka, how does Landon have a gold border? It's it's just a tag, so you can kind of see, like right now, after they had to switch tables, we can't always get like Bill at the top. So with the gold border, you can know, oh, okay, that's Landon, because on the left table right now, Landon's up top, and on the right table, he's down bottom. So we're able to just tag players like you would normally in your uh, ACR client. And the stats, AK907 in the bottom left there, you could see the total challenge right now. Perkins is down 132K total, but this session he's down just a little over a buy-in. Large Farva MMA is for, I mean, I think you mean prima donna. <laughs> MMA is for prima donnas. Just start a fight club in your backyard, man. That's what me and my buddies do. So now I'm picturing Large Farva like diving off of the roof, doing like a flying elbow drop onto a folding table. And, and making the uh, what could go wrong for him on Reddit. <laughs> Man, knowing my, knowing my luck, sometimes I say it like this, even though I feel like I'm fairly lucky, but uh, jumping onto like a trampoline from a roof and stuff, I just feel like it would break. I'm just never going to do that. All right, uh, you so. know, I'm right. I mean, it's like, OK, what are you hoping happens? Like when if this goes really well, what will happen? You hit it, you, you you bounce, and you hope that you don't bounce off. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I could be pretty risk averse at times. <laughs> that seems like a good risk to be averse from, you know? Yeah. You could be yeah. a calculated risk taker, you know, that's that's life, that's poker. But uh, the flying elbow drops off the roof onto the trampoline. What are we hoping happens? Yeah. What's up, Mikey Cash? How's it going? Shout out to uh, the lurkers out there, everybody tuning in for today's heads up match between Bill Perkins and Landon Tice. If you're not familiar, my name is Drew. Bet on Drew, we got my boy Scott, AKA Hop Grenade in the chat. Some of you might remember a year and a half ago, Scott and I did commentary on the cage down in Costa Rica for the uh, 5K cash tournament hybrid game, which buddy, I cannot wait till that comes back again. That was That experience literally is just so much fun. ACR does such a good job with that. And I'm not just saying that, because I'm with ACR, like legit, the experience is awesome. 
Agreed 100%. I'm not a team pro, and I'm telling you that yeah, that's exactly right. And so it'll be great to uh, get back to some IRL normalcy and see each other again once again in Costa Rica. I heard a rumor, it is only a rumor, that is coming back in 2022. And hopefully, you know what, dude, now that you're a team pro, will you be yeah. on the table? You know, I'll, I'll call the show all day long, and I want to see the, the, the pros playing. I mean, I'm assuming you're looking forward to actually sitting down with some cards in hand, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't wait to play it again. I am much better of a poker player now than I was when I got to play the cage in 2019. Because I played the cage in 2019. You and I right. commentated yes. 2020. Yeah, 2020, oh, yeah. the beginning. Yep. We mm -hmm. commentated together. Yep. Yeah, so, so it would be, be great. If you play, it'll be your second play, right? Yep. Yeah, cool. Uh, safe travels there at P Drop, going to Costa Rica on Sunday. What's going on in Costa Rica? And you know what I'm pretty confident about? ACR did a good job of this for sure in the past, running satellites on the client to the cage. Uh, I believe it was like an 8K, 8.5K package. You got your $5,000 buy-in. You got some spending money for while you're in Costa Rica. Your travel expenses are all covered. But I know once the cage comes back, there are going to be insane satellites that are for sure going to be popping off all the time. Like I said earlier, the satellites on ACR now, you, you know, you can win a bunch of tickets. You could stack tickets and do stuff that we really weren't able to do a couple years ago. But ACR has grown so much. So like when these cage saddies come back, man, it's going to be awesome. And there's going to be I, I would imagine, honestly, I think that when the next cage happens, that we are going to potentially maybe see the first time, like be a hundred some people at the cage. I think that would be insane. Fill the room up. Yeah, that would be, it would be awesome. Uh, I think maybe what, like four, five tables is really the biggest it's, it's been, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know that uh, the, you know, hanging out uh, in the, uh, you know, offline, downstairs the bar the casino just having a good time with some of the folks who who, who had won their way there for past cages ha had a blast and they they have a they have a kick-ass time without exception yep a million percent buddy such a cool experience all right we got 13k plus here on the table to the river similar boards showing up here king high and uh, it's going to be up to landon here if he wants to make a bet here and he does not we're going to see the cards and uh, ooh, two pair from Perky. Maybe yep. getting a little coy there, checking the river instead of going for value. And uh, can we get a replay of that train? Did you catch that that last one on the left side table? That would be cool to see what Landon had there. Uh, yeah, for sure. Landon overbet. So Landon, uh, a lot of the time, and honestly, the majority of the time I've been seeing some overbets in this match, it's a lot of uh, gut shoddy uh, kind of draws that were, I think a lot of the time from what I've seen, these overbets are inducing, trying to induce some folds here. So when we see Landon check, I think he's gonna have a gut shot when we pull that up of some sorts because there's so many other hands that were just pot controlling, check calling, and obviously he lost there to two pair. Maybe Landon does have a King X there sometimes. So that'll be cool to see, but I'm very intrigued and interested uh, what Bill might've been thinking there, checking two pair on the river. Cause the only hand that really got there that beats him, I don't think Landon, uh, Landon has 7-10, Landon has Jack-10 because of what I just said. So I guess a couple of the overbets did get there. Hmm. But I would imagine Landon continues to bet when he gets there on the river. So sure. I would have expected to see a bet from Bill there, for sure. At least maybe a, a third pot bet. Right, yeah, like exactly. Week one pair call. Totally, yep. Uh, a small, uh, you know, small value bet, make it look like a block you know just one of those crying please call me bets and that that actually this time was not a disguised please call me bet but actually just a please call me bet and it looks like you know what uh unfortunately train is uh, uh spinning some plates behind the scenes and a couple of them are getting a little wobbly uh so he's got to get those back going and we're not going to be able to see a replay on that particular hand that's all right we figured it out L L landon had a weak king and uh, that was <laughs> yes. a chat Let's there go with that. Land had a weak king. Yeah, and he was good. <laughs> he was good enough to check it behind. Yep. Imagine watching Bill Perkins. Do you mean seeing his cards, big slick energy, in real time? 
can only imagine can only imagine seeing just imagine if we could see both of their cards and just like what they're doing that would be very very interesting but again this is very high level poker that we're seeing here between both of these players so i would imagine for the casual poker player and even the uh the immediate in, intermediate poker players that a lot of the stuff that you're seeing in this heads up match is going to if you were to see the hands you'd be like i would never do that i would never do that <laughs> what are I they doing do that what is yeah. this uh it's a three bet and a call on the left side table pre-flop uh three bet from bill and a call from landon we do see a bet and a call on the on the flop here and to the turn board pairs that middle six and uh, this time, Bill is going to check it and uh, cede control of the hand over to Landon, who will be betting here most of the time, I imagine. Big pot here. Okay, he, setting up the river jam. Sure, and he, you know, of course, the the, the uh, board pairing sixes favors Landon here far more often than Bill. Bill being the pre-flop three better, so Landon is taking advantage of that, whether or not he has the six, and uh, it's going to work. Bill's going to go, you got it. You know, the ace king, ace queen has just shriveled up by that point. And if you're Bill, you kind of have no option. That ain't your board, man. Landon knows that and he takes it down. You know, another cool thing I was thinking about is with these matches not being on any sort of a schedule, like this one, just like, oh, they're playing tomorrow. You know, everybody's like rushing around to get ready for this match and whatnot. But it's, it's interesting to think about like, this is like Bill's schedule, essentially, right? Uh, when Bill can play and Landon is kind of in an interesting spot where he kind of has to put everything on hold and just be on call to like yeah. play these matches. Like this is Landon's life right now till these 20,000 hands are done. So think about that chat. That's very interesting to me because, you know, I I'm thinking like if I were in Landon's shoes playing somebody like Bill here, like, for like Landon's story, this is like a, a huge thing that could like, okay, Landon beats Bill, overcomes a 720K handicap, and he has this amazing story. But in order to kind of make that happen, he's gotta be like studying, reviewing hands, kind of doing all the things off the felt in order to be successful that he needs to. And he has to be ready at a moment's notice to do battle at 200, 400, 800 right it's a, isn't it's a that really, crazy it's a really good point yeah he's kind of i didn't think about that you're so right like he's on the he's sort of at the whim of uh, bill and his crazy schedule you know and it's like you, you picture bill like getting off of a of a of a citation jet in slow motion his trench coat blowing in the wind he puts on <laughs> his sunglasses and he's like well i have a couple of hours let's go and landon's just got to be ready to go at that moment yeah it's crazy. It's very cool. The dynamic in this heads up match is very, very cool to me. I'm uh, happy that we're here. Very lucky to be uh, commentating a match in, in the spot we're in. What's up, Mama Momac? How are you? Good to see you. Momac. What's up, darling? And yeah, you're right. We are. This is a, a fortunate position we're in to get to get a front row seat to this and, and offer our thoughts. So it's a privilege. Thanks, ACR, for uh, hosting such a cool freaking show. And What's yeah, up, Brian, my man. Good to see you. The the, um, the the regular show, the regular ACR show, as Ghost of M points out, uh, will happen as normal as long as this match isn't happening at the same time, which of course it is at this moment. Um, so this is the uh, ACR show for today. But the normal train host of the ACR show will be uh, on its normal schedule Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon, um, dependent, you know, as long as this match is not happening at that time. It's a great show, Train Runs, by the way. For those of you who haven't watched it yet, it's just a lot of creative, fun, engaging, very, very cool show with different segments that you're just not gonna see anywhere else. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you do hit the follow button on the stream and turn on your notifications for Monday, Wednesday, Fridays when the, uh, he goes live. You gotta check that show out. A lot of giveaways too. Train is a pro. He does a great show. Bars? Did you try to rhyme there or what? <laughs> Train is a pro. He does a great show. Your mom is a hoe. What do you I'm know? Like... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have currently 105 people in chat eligible for this upcoming giveaway. 
We're going to draw the first winner in about 10 minutes. $55 ticket on ACR. So the keyword is bet on Scott. If you have not typed it into the chat yet, make sure you do. Yeah, Ghost is telling me that uh, we're at what up to 105 eligible users so far for the uh, for the uh, drawing. So let's try and break 130 for that first draw. Bet on Scott. Oh, nice. Hey, Lawn Car is contributing to our uh, rhyme fest. The commentators have a great flow. They so good you ain't gonna watch any other show. Any other streamer, no mo. Good stuff, Lankar. Thank you. Hey, Lankar, you're such a nice guy, buddy. You know what? <laughs> I really like you. You're gassing us up a little bit, even though we just missed a 25k pot chat. Sorry. Whoops. All right. Sometimes we get in, we get into our flow and whatnot. But you know what, chat? I will bet you money that there will be another 25k pot. That might have been a boring one. You know, maybe that's why we kind of missed it. We're like, oh, this is a boring 25k pot, especially after the 80, 100k pots that we caught earlier. <laughs> yeah. Scott. Right, exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll only the exciting 25k pots will we bother mentioning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Chat, you're great. I feel you. And I'm glad everybody's hyped up about this match and you want to be here hanging out with us commentating. And the fact that, you know, yo, you missed the 25k pot. Like, I, I, I like that passion. I like that you guys are into it like we are. Except you, for that one pot. Yeah, except for the one. Will you guys <laughs> shut up and pay attention to the game for God's sakes? Right. Cool. Right. Oh, a big raise here on the flop. Big, big raise from Landon. And that's going to be good enough to, I'm sorry, on the turn. And that's going to be good enough to take down. Very cool. So Bill's built up a little bit of a stack on the right table here. The left table is the reset table where Landon got up to a 135K stack i think it was and then they reset because once they get up to 300 big blinds or 120k they are resetting the tables bill picks up a pot there lawn car mentions that uh, he hates it when he's playing a boring 25k pot i know man ain't it just the dregs <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very, very special guest. I got to meet this special guest back in 2019. And a lot of you may know him from his current high stakes battle he's got going on with Dan Smith. What's up, MJ? How's it going, brother? Good to see you. How you guys doing? MJ, hey, good man. to see you, dude. Good to see you guys, too. Buddy, what do you think of this match? Like, what are your thoughts? Like, there's been a lot going on with this uh what do you think i'm completely indifferent to the results of this match i'm just uh here working with bill and we're we're focusing on him executing uh to the best of his ability right now um typically with heads up you know short-term results it, that doesn't necessarily dicta dictate how well you're playing so uh we're just focusing on making the right moves and and following the right heuristics now, MJ, so, we so did... being Bill... go, go ahead, go ahead, Drew. I was just going to say, so being Bill's coach, MJ, uh, how do you feel about his play so far up to this point? Uh, I'm very happy. I'm absolutely very happy. We did notice uh, in the uh, last stream, Ebony and I had noted that uh, when uh, a couple of pots had not gone Bill's way after uh, he was sort of cruising for the first 20, 30 minutes or so. And then a couple of big pots didn't go his way. We have, we, we thought we noticed him, but well, we definitely noticed him making moves quicker. Uh, I don't know right. if you noticed that same thing. And uh, well, we you know, absolutely noticed that. no, we absolutely noticed it. And that's uh, one of the first things that we made adjustments on, you know, and keep in mind, Bill Perkins isn't a professional poker player, right? So he isn't immune to running bad or playing poorly or making mistakes, et cetera. So like, he's gonna be slightly more emotional than if it were, you know, an elite pro playing. So those are some adjustments that we have to make and, you know, he's, he's correcting those. Um, but I, we shouldn't see any more timing issues. You know, we should see the correct sizings across the board. Um, and then also, so the link you guys sent me to watch the tables, it says that it's busy. There's too many people watching. So I'm kind of 
on a delay watching the Twitch stream. Is that is that a, some sort of compliment, or you mean that literally? I mean that literally. I'm oh, on. Oh wow, <laughs> that's cool. That's a good problem to have. Yeah, it says right, the so... Railbird is experiencing high traffic currently. Please try again later. All right, we'll get Train to uh, work on that for sure. Uh, random update. MJ, I haven't noticed, but are you and Dan still playing fairly regularly, or is your energy kind of now moved a bit uh, between both of these? No, so uh, I plan on playing Dan as much as he wants to play. He decided to take uh, a month break uh, to go visit family and have dinners and stuff like that. So when he comes back, we'll resume play, but everything stops when Victor comes into town soon. Limitless. Gotcha, gotcha. Ooh, we do we have an all in left. here. And Bill outflops Landon. Can he hold? Ooh, no, he does he's paid. Hold. And a Huge big 92K pot. pot for Bill. Yeah, that's got to feel good. And man, that is something we have not seen much of at all. Pre flop all ins. There was one classic hold'em situation, and Bill comes out on top. That's got to feel good. Oh, yeah. Now, is that Especially you, after losing. Yeah. Yeah, after those big ones, yeah, exactly. Like one went his way, and that does got to feel good. And is that is that just like um, a coincidence thing, MJ? That we or is something? Have you guys actually talked specifically about like avoiding pre flop all ins, or we just haven't really seen any? No, of course not. I mean, keep in mind, we have a very small sample size, right? And right. you know, these opponents are they're going to be rolling, right? They're not puring a lot of hands within said range, so it just the stars have to align, and you know, the strategies have to just follow through with the execution. And it, I mean, you're not gonna get tons and tons and tons of all ins, especially in 2K hands, right? Sure. So it's, it's just variance. Makes sense to me. And we do have a uh, big raise and a call from Bill to go to the flop. And there's a 21K out there, king high board, a couple of spades, and we'll see who got the best of this one. Landed with a tiny bet. Just dipping his big toe into the swimming pool. Yeah, I think Bill's gonna call a lot here. Looks like Landon's setting up to jam the turn. I would think, but I'm not a heads up specialist. Uh, and wow. Bill does fold. There yeah, you go. he hated that <laughs> flop for sure. So I think, um, MJ, we're trying to get you to be able to see the uh, tables from not the screen, right? I think we're still working on that. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Okay, cool. So chat, if you're just tuning in, we have MJ Gonzalez here hanging out with us. And this is Bill's coach. So this is a very cool perspective we get to have on this heads up match as we are about an hour into today's session. You can see in the bottom left, they're basically break even on today's session after Bill just won that big flip with Ace King versus Jax. And total for the challenge, we are about 2,200 hands in, and Bill is only down two buy ins. So, still very, we got a long, long ways to go, like MJ was saying before. Uh, oh, a replay of the uh, pre flop ball in. We'll see how the money got in. It was a open from Bill. Bill's got the ace king of spades here. Of course, a standard three bet from Landon, and Bill's got a monster, so he comes back over the top four bet and a jam and a call. Yep, makes sense. And Bill is just uh, on the good side of that flip. The river card was a little, a little puckery, <laughs> but it was. Uh, yeah, it was. And a uh, good spot for Bill there. Where are you? Where are you broadcasting from, MJ? My house, Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. How is Vegas? Uh, you know, it's been, I, I heard it was weird and then now it's blowing up like never before. Is that true? Oh, it's great here, man. The weather's beautiful. The poker's great. The golf is great. Living the dream. And we uh, have a race here on the river. Bill's going to call. Going to see what Landon's raising with. Oh, a nice jack eight. Top two pair for Bill is going to be good. Are you guys surprised to not see a three bet there from Bill? I, I'm, I'm not seeing the action right now. I, I'm oh, okay. I don't, did you catch that? Or, or, I don't know if, if Train's working on stuff, if we can see a replay of that one. Uh, yeah, I saw the raise. I think that uh, Bill did have 
top two there. I'm not sure what worse hands Landon is going to be um, Ray's calling there. And also, we did see that spot where Bill didn't value bet the two pair uh, a little bit earlier and yep. just checked behind on the river when only the uh, couple of gut shots got there. So maybe Bill is um, kind of taking a little slow in some of these river spots we're seeing. I think he just is bluff catching mostly with that hand. Sure. Poker King says, who won the bet on Scott? I think we are, did we actually pull that yet, Ghost? I, I don't think didn't we did. notice. I don't think we pulled it yet. So you have probably a couple of minutes here to go ahead and type bet on Scott in the chat for a shot at a $55 ticket. Oh, Ghost is waiting on us to do it. Oh, we're waiting on Ghost. Ghost is waiting on us. <laughs> <laughs> all right build this call here on the turn on the right side table all right everybody i see 341 on my clock here in less than a minute we are going to pull the winner here all right so tight bet on scott hurry up you don't have too much time left we're gonna pull the first 55 dollars ticket winner at the end of this hand on the right There is the river raise from Bill. I, I sense that coming. I don't really know why, but Landon does make a two-thirds pot bet, and he does call. Bill raises, Landon calls, and Bill wow, rivered. Oh, nice. Seven full. Whoa, what a river card. I wonder if Landon had a queen there. I, I suspect he did, if he's going to be calling that, that raise. Yep, and, so a nice pot there for Bill. Yeah. All right, I'm all connected, boys. I'm ready to go. Sick. Right on. Yeah, that was interesting. That was uh, a, uh, ace, queen, queen, x, seven on the river. And uh, Landon had bet the river, Bill raised, and Landon called. And Bill rolled two sevens. And I sus we were just saying, I suspect that uh, Landon probably had the three queens if he's going to be calling that. So a great river card for Bill there. Great. So as you can see, it's like Bill's still making some small mistakes, right? On the 10-8-3-2 the diamond, he bet flop and his turn bet. That's actually that's actually a dominated uh, spot for overbets. So you're going to be overbetting or checking, and so he went and used a different sizing. So there's still some tweaks that need to be adjusted, you know. But we're getting there. So congrats to the winner here. Reverse forty three twenty one is going to win our first fifty five dollar ticket. Tag Ghost of M in the chat. Reverse to claim your ticket and stay tuned, everybody. We got some more coming up. We got a replay here right now. Yes, Landon opened and uh, Bill called. Landon makes bottom pair, 2K in the middle. It goes check, check. And a great turn card for Landon. He does make jacks up and then he gets bet into. Bill makes a pot size bet, Landon, with the uh, just a call. The six of pumpkins means nothing. Landon loves his hand. He sees a tiny bet from Bill. So naturally he raises and uh, Bill does call. And in this spot, Bill had a bell. Oh, that's right, that he had the uh, the top two. So this was actually a strange spot where he just could have gotten even a little bit more value from Landon. Uh, but like you said, Drew, in most spots there, you know, is Landon gonna raise call with that hand? That exact hand, probably, but Jack eight, you just kind of are like up against the straight if you're gonna get called on a four bet on the river, I guess, right? What do you think, MJ, of that spot? Would you have liked to have seen Bill raise his uh, top two? Yeah, he's going to be mixing them for sure. I'd like to see some more value out of there. But going to this uh, king three deuce turn nine, we're, we're going to expect to see some overbets or checks here from Landon. And I'm interested. There, so and right, the right on cue, there is the overbet. And why, so you, why do you say that, MJ? Explain the logic. Yeah, so it's a disconnected turn, right? So it has to do with range advantage and the way the range is constructed on both sides. And on, on disconnected turns, we're going to have a frequency of overbets and checks. You're not going to see as many two-thirds or pot size bets. Now, if it's a... Now, if the... And, and so you just think like a, a two-thirds pot bet wouldn't be as effective uh, as a uh, it's a disconnected turn and I don't have any part of it. I'm just taking advantage of the fact that it's a disconnected turn. Why wouldn't two-thirds pot do the same thing that an over, over bet would? It just performs better, right? So like, yeah, you could bet two-thirds. It, it doesn't perform as well as an over bet. It's going to be more of a polarized spot and we have significant range advantage in that spot. Now, however, 
on the king deuce three, if it's turn four, right, we're not going to have the over bets. We're going we're to have a different selection of sizes. So being cognizant of the sizing options and availabilities for textures and range construction is the main part of how post flop mechanics of heads up works. And that, that's like where it gets really deep. And that's where a lot of people st uh, struggle. Landon is obviously incredibly sharp. He had um, a month and a half to practice and he's nailing the majority of the sizings across the board. There's some where he's making mistakes and build too, and it is what it is, but that's where that's where the TV comes in, right? That's where the fun of it is. Ebony and I were kind of discussing this, Drew, the context in which you would really get a lot of practice at, at competitive heads up, not just a, a home game here or a, you know, garage game there, but real like a, a certain, not like this, obviously, this is very high stakes, but a circumstance where you're really getting good practice at serious competitive heads up. There's almost no circumstances where it really happens. Like, you know, how, how versed are you in heads up? Not, not much at all, honestly. I'm, I'm such a tournament junkie. You know how often we actually get to heads up. It's just like not enough. But uh, I know that this is just like mano y mano. You don't get to do this much. And just even hearing MJ talk about that other hand uh, just a minute ago, it's like it, it's there's just like levels to this. And I feel like you have to dedicate so much of your time and energy to be able to compete on this level. It's it's amazing to me, man. I, I'm, I'm such a fan of like what's going on here. And I think it's amazing that we have MJ here for insight on this match. You yeah, know, the, the funny part about the mechanics of heads up, like personally, um, I would t I tell a lot of our clients and and just I would tell the average poker player, like if you want to get better at full ring, I'd like you to focus on heads up, understanding the mechanics and the heuristics that what I mean by heuristics are like the, the go to rules. For example, um, if I am in a if I'm in a line of a check call check bet, I am going to have X amount of options. I'm going to have three sizings that I'm using all at a frequency. And so that is a kind of a, a go to rule, right? Well, there's rules like that across the entire game tree at every node. Right, so your bet, check, bet, your bet, 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 your check, bet, bet. You know, even there's even heuristics for pre-flop dynamics in three and four bet pots, etc. So understanding and identifying the heuristics, the the fundamental rules, will absolutely help you across the entirety of your of your journey in poker. That being said, there's a lot of similarities post-flop to the heuristics of no limit heads up and full ring. So you understanding. A, the, a decent framework of heads up will absolutely carry you a lot in across the nodes and game tree of full ring. So I would suggest Jeez. I would suggest to you know everyone trying to evolve their game, fiddle with uh, with heads up because it will absolutely help you and guide you in the right direction in full ring. Post Jeez, I'm for, I'm inspired, man. Jeez, hearing that I need to I need to you know take the rest of the night like start getting into some uh heads up uh studies i mean actually like mj if somebody wanted to take your advice there how do you think is the maybe easiest or the best way to get started to get better at heads up well i guess it's all relative right so depending on bankroll and uh time that you're that you can allocate to this like they have small heads up tables on acr um i, I typically if i if i weren't going to play online uh, for real money, I would I would get a group of buddies together and start firing off some uh, some heads up play and start sharing hand histories in that way and reach out and actually build the community from from inward of the heads up play and I would start asking coaches like there's a, there's a plenty of coaches out there that are happy to help you know and there's some really good coaches like K Rap you know he's he's excellent you know us at Hybrid Poker like we're very strong and like like. Doug Polk's site, like they have a lot of information. So the information is absolutely out there. Makes sense, makes sense. Uh, yeah. Your hybrid poker, is is that uh, something that you have available to the public? I haven't come across it, but is it is there a site or anything where people can look into that? Here it is. All right, Ooh, another hold. one. Let's hold. Just got to avoid an ace or a king. He's a spade. Ace of spades. Yeah. Nice. Let's go, Bill. I'm a little partial to Bill, guys. I'm rooting for Landon, too, rooting for Bill. I'm enjoying this match, but I'm a little partial, you know? I like seeing Bill win big flips. So they're going to reset this table, too, by the way. I'm absolutely not fucking partial. I want him to bury the kid. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. I want, I want him to beat the spot. I want him to beat him outright. I want him to fucking bury his backers. And I like all of his backers, by the way. There is no bad blood between us, but I want them fucking buried. <laughs> I hey, listen, I, I love these guys, but I want to lock them up and throw away the key and uh, just uh, demoralize them for the rest of their and their family's lives. Well, yeah, I mean, look, it just goes to show like how you study and the information available. Because so I'll even back this up a little bit. Like there are incredibly large barriers to entry to start studying solvers in the first place, right? Like you have to have the right hardware. You have to have, you have to understand the whys of things. You have, there's so many barriers of entry. So when you have that and you're coming into heads up play, it just speaks volumes for the amount of information Bill is, is able to retain. Because when we first started with him, I, I, I'm not kidding. My, my one and a half year old daughter is gonna stand a chance against him. He was horrendous. <laughs> but how much he's progressed in, the, in these two months is unreal and just goes to show how sharp Bill actually is. This is the first time, and we've been with Bill for almost four years. This is the first time he's ever put in an ounce of study. Like he's just too rich, right? Bill Perkins is gonna do what Bill Perkins, Bill Perkins thinks. But he actually tried and it's showing in his play. You know, I, I was watching the Solve for Live stream earlier and Nick Marchington, who is incredibly sharp, was like, I am in, I'm completely impressed with Bill Perkins and how, and how he's executing this. He is way better than I thought he would be. And that just goes to show the information that Bill has access to and the willingness Bill is is uh, going to be working. We're going to see the replay on that sevens hand. So Bill did open with them. He gets called from Landon. The flop brings him uh, queens to go with his sevens. And uh, I believe it went check bet call. We'll see. No, it was check check. Okay, the two two of pumpkins, irrelevant. Pot, pot's still pretty small at this point. And, and now Landon bets. And of course, we're not folding the sevens. And uh, we do just see a call. And then the river is gold. And we see uh, two thirds pot, and then Bill, of course, raises with his Nut River card. And I, I suspected Landon had a queen to call this raise here. We're going to find out in a moment. He did have Queen Jack playing it coyly, and what a great River card for Bill. Man, oh man. They both played it great. Uh, Dennis Sanchez says, uh, dude, MJ has been so influential for me in my game since 2017 Been following. And one day I got to meet him, uh, while Nubian queen was playing on his table and, uh, with, uh, avoid the nine to five, they invited me to sit. And it was one of the most fun, uh, moments of my life. Such cool peeps. So Dennis Sanchez, uh, enjoyed his time with you, dude. That's great to hear, man. That's great. It's all about having fun at the table. 100%, 100%. I'm curious, MJ, as you were mentioning about uh, you, you hope to see Landon get buried here in a very, like, you know, fun, passionate way. But he, super young, like, really good Landon here, 22. Do you think that him getting destroyed in this match will make him a better player? It's like maybe, like, overall big picture better for him to get destroyed here. Do, do you feel oh. that or anything? So it's a very good question. Uh, do I think it's gonna make him a better player? No, I think he's incredibly sharp. I think he is ahead of the curve and I think that he is going to dominate the field moving forward in his career. He has shown that with his skills. And I, I've, I've watched a little bit of his stream. He's saying shit that not many people say that I hear in our circles. Like the kid is sharp. It's not gonna help with this poker game, but what it is gonna help with is his, his career path, his maturity level, his responsibility level. Right, like firing off at the mouth on Twitter and then having to come here and execute, you know, and, and get everything scrambled to get all the backers and stuff ready. Like to me, that was green, right? Firing off at nine BBs per 100, to me, that's green, you know? And he's gonna make a name for himself regardless. If he loses, it's not the end of the world for him at all, but it will absolutely mature him, which I, I truly believe he will have a better career long run the, the faster he gets over the, you know, any ego that he may or may not have and any irresponsibility that he may or may not have. And most importantly, the maturity aspect, right? Because at the end of the day, poker necessarily isn't a skill game at the highest levels. It's a social ladder, right? So doing things, following social protocols and, and doing things respectfully. And uh, I think that's really important for all young players to learn. 
John wow. Party joins us in the chat. And I, what up, Party? And this is perfect, Drew. Just indulge me quickly. Party, of course, the uh, the uh, hockey, uh, longtime hockey enforcer. I believe he played what? Didn't he play collegiate? I mean, he was like a semi-pro hockey player. Per your point, MJ, Wayne Gretzky and the Edmonton Oilers frequently mentioned getting their ass kicked around the block for drill by the New York Islanders uh, as when they were like a young up upstart team and the Islanders had won three Stanley Cups in a row and they met in the finals and they just kicked young Gretzky and the Oilers asses and it was a maturing experience for them and it taught them how to win and they came back the next year and it was Islanders Oilers again in the finals and this time Gretzky and the Oilers won and they dominated the 80s from there. There's tons of truth to what you're saying and there are lots of examples of it. Absolutely. I mean, I, I truly believe that, right? Um, but Landon Sharp, you know, he's going to do well in his poker career. There's no doubt about it. Big pot here on the left side table. A small bet here from Landon on the flop. Bill trying to figure yeah, out. In these, in these four bet pots, you're gonna very you're very often gonna see 20 to 25 percent bets, and then sometimes you're gonna see 30 percent bets on turn which is counterintuitive for a four bet pot. You're not leaving the SPR, right? Like the SPRs are funky. And then you're gonna see some, some rips as well. So Perkins actually is executing a very high level strategy here. Uh, on nine deuce four, even suited um, and off suit, you're gonna have min raises as your dominant size here. And it's, it's, it's really counterintuitive and funky, especially in four bet pots, but it absolutely is solver approved. You know, well, it's an and it sets up the open jam on the turn, and uh, that's going to take it down for Bill. Interesting. I, I, is that the first min raise we've seen today, Drew? Uh, I'm not sure. I think actually, maybe I missed it. Bill, on the when the flush came in, he donk jammed into Landon, which is something that I wouldn't really think to do on that board. But MJ, did you did you like that play? The play I just saw. Yeah. 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 One hundred percent across the board. That's going to be his main sizing for raising there. Nice, well, nice. so yeah, the, and the, the min raise, he, you know, when he gets called on the flop, it's set, I, 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 I'm guessing the, the min raise, if he gets called, is setting up the donk open jam on the turn then. There, there are multiple reasons as to why that I don't want to get into, but it, that <laughs> it, it, there's, it's, it's solver approved, let's say that. <laughs> I love that, I love that. You know, because effectively what this is, like, not only is it Bill versus Landon, it's hybrid poker's quant versus solve for wise quant, right? And what, what I'm really meaning is our solver work versus their solver work and how they can both apply and execute, right? So if for example, ours or their abstractions are off in any way, they're not gonna get accurate solves, right? If they don't have the right sizes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, there, there's multiple facets going on here. It's not just Bill versus Landon. That's uh, that's actually very very cool insight to think about the behind the scenes. You know, the hybrid versus solve for why and like your guys work. It's almost like uh, not not really. This is probably not the best way to say it, but like Bill's pit crew and Landon's pit crew. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean absolutely. It is quite literally. It's it's team versus team. You know, I know these guys are in the field right now, but I mean, if you guys don't think that we're working five hours a day every day with Bill and Landon's team's doing the same. Like, Landon doesn't know, he hasn't played enough heads up or has enough hands to fully understand the mechanics of, of no limit heads up hold'em, right? There are still so many things that he's missing and Bill and everyone else in the world for that matter. So this absolutely is a is a team function here. So yeah, sick, yeah. man, that's so sick. Even with my matches, right? If you don't think that I go play Dan Smith 501K and we have a million in front of us, you, if you don't think that I'm going right back to my team after and going, all right, here's my hands, boys. Let's run it. Let's make sure that we're executing appropriately. Like, we absolutely are. And so is Dan Smith with iCaxton, et cetera. Makes sense. Makes sense. Now, Perkins says he we're only at minus 21K. Now, of course, there's going to be a lot of swings and variants, but this has been a, 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 a pretty awesome spin up here by, by Bill in the last hour or so. So we're losing 21K on the session? On the, uh, a total. We're up 64 for the session. Oh, good. Fuck 
<laughs> Bury the kid, man. Bury him. You know, I don't know if you are you looking over here, Drew. You know, there's like a thir a, a thirst lounge reunion happening in the chat. I saw Payday popped in. What up, Payday? And uh, Momax in the house. And it's uh, it's it's 2019 all over again, dude. And I fucking love I know. Those. I love those thirst lounge guys. We, we had some interesting, fun phone calls with some prop bets. It was uh, yeah, we did we, a lot of uh, very very memorable. I remember that. This is this is cool. Bill Bill on the uh, tables. MJ here and. Wow, that feels like forever ago, the Thirst Lounge. Yeah, and I lost all the money with those <laughs> I did not win one. Oh yeah, Drew, you stood for 27 hours, you freaking maniac. I, yeah, I had to stand, I think it was, yeah, I think it was 27, but then I ended up standing for like an extra two, it was like 29 in total, and then I got to sleep for like three hours, and then Party woke me up, because he was uh, day two or day three in the Venom, and man, that was, that was a life-changing experience for me. And I will never forget like anything that happened there, literally. Yeah, that was epic. And and yeah, who could forget Party's run there and your run too? Uh, I was wait, no, who? What was the early one that was like uh, like to forty three or forty five k? Uh, I satellited into my very yeah. first 10K on Party Poker, and I ended right. up final tabling it. I don't know how, literally, the, the guys in that tournament were just like all mega crushers. Yeah. I had to make some hands, and literally, it was a miracle that I final tabled my very first 10K. Quit it, selling it's dumb. yourself short. Quit selling yourself short. You got some game, bro. <laughs> I know you have some game. <laughs> you definitely, what, what did you finish, Drew? It was like seventh, right, or sixth? uh seventh or eighth for like 41k yeah yeah sick that was awesome and then party made a super deep run in the venom and of course who could forget him running his he ran a six minute mile what the hell that was insane yeah how that's did he just do like, that it's not supposed to happen it's like he's either just you know what i mean like i, I would take sides here it's like he's either just like just dumb enough that like he, he shuts off all his like normal body functions and things that like you're not supposed to do that and he just does it or it's just heart you know there was like two sides in that video that we have it's like either this guy's a maniac he's a psychopath or he's just got all the heart you know that was really just unbelievable i i would have i would have bet a, like a car that he couldn't do that and just thought it was free money Always bet on the man. Never underestimate the man when it comes to bets. Uh, you're so right, and I will never make that mistake again. If the man is confident and he is putting a significant amount of his net worth up, you always bet on the man. I mean, oh, it's sure. like the, 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 rule, the rule of entrepreneurial uh, like investment too, right? You, you're kind of, really, it's about the person who's pitching you the idea less than it is about the idea. Yeah, so like we work with uh, some companies and we invest in some things and me and my partner, the, the company is just icing on the cake. We invest in the, in the people. If they're good people, if they have integrity, if they work hard, we invest in them. I love that. I love that. But you've inspired me uh, in a bunch of ways since we first uh, crossed paths in the Thirst Lounge, you know, the prop bets and just getting some insight. Like, it's really cool having you here. And even you made a comment earlier that really started to, like, send some signals to my brain and now hearing you know bet on the man like that's just like man that's so true and i don't know i just i, I love that that approach yeah i mean look for the first time i met you I, I immediately recognized that you had incredible potential you were just scared of yourself that i, I don't mean to i don't mean to get too private right but i dig it i like it you were absolutely scared of yourself is either scared of success or scared of failure they're all one and the same to me and you just needed to discover your confidence and that you you actually have a place here and when you did i mean you progressed leaps and bounds so i'm incredibly uh, proud to see you where you are now oh, buddy you, that means a lot can you describe what that means mj like you picked up on what that made you make that assessment his mannerisms all the social interactions i had with him you know he was quasi aloof and you know he he was almost introverted and you know unsure of himself and kind of second guessing how he would interact with people or what he what value he thought he could add to x y or z and i i'm an incredibly blunt person like i'm, I'm polarizing you either love me or hate me and i'm okay with that I like, <laughs> I like who i am but i said to him i said yo this shit has got to change you absolutely have potential you are you deserve every single thing that you put yourself into and achieve like it, it's time to grow up and just grab the bull by the horns because you deserve it and you absolutely have the skill set to achieve it 
And he, you know, he did. And not, and I can't say that for a lot of people. He absolutely accomplished it. So I'm, I'm incredibly proud and grateful to have had that experience with him and conversation with him. I love that. That's that's real chat. That, that's real. And I'm, I'm not the guy like I don't care if somebody says like what they see and it, it's real. Like I'm down with being vulnerable and being I think this is important for a lot of people, especially in poker and life, really. But you kind of need to be able to like take in what people like um, MJ are saying, like they're going to be real and you can't take offense to it. You got to be like, oh, snap, like this is legit. Like take that in and give yourself that opportunity to grow. And I'm happy that you see it that way, but I'm down, man, for for anybody giving me, especially, you know what I mean? You, you respect somebody, their opinion, you know, they're coming from like a good spot. You can feel that energy. Like you got to run with it because how often do you get insight like what we're getting from MJ and how many friends do you have will be like real with you? You know what I mean? 100%. Guys, quickly, we have a, uh, a four bet and a call free flop here on the left side table. And uh, to the uh, flop we go, we do see a check from Bill and a uh, little less than a quarter pot bet here from Landon. Kind of a garbagey board. And uh, that little bet's going to be good enough. Bill did not like that board. It seems like MJ in, in a lot of these four bet pots here that. Are we just allowed to bet range essentially for like 20% pot in a lot more of these situations? Or, more, more or less, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get too deep into, you know, uh, into the info streets, but more or less, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here on the right side table, we have a uh, check from Bill, a bet from Landon, and a quick call. Can we get a replay of that one, Train? I'd like to see what... Uh, Bill was calling with there. Gentlemen, yeah, I'll be right back. There's actually, there's actually two things that I learned at a very young age. One of them was to not take things personally. So for example, when I would get criticism from people I looked up to in any field that I was in, it was always, okay, I'm not gonna take this personally, I'm gonna be objective and I'm going to take that information in and I'm going to try to evolve from it. And a lot of people in today, especially in poker, like it's it's become like this trend to just shit on people if you don't know them or if you if they make a mistake or if they don't play up to the level you think they should or could. And it, it's just it's a it's a it's a terrible narrative, right, that we have going on where it's like instead of shitting on them, if you can help them, help them. If you can't help them, shut the fuck up. Right? Like it's just it's pointless to me. Do you think that the poker world attracts those kind of people or people become that way from being in the poker world? So that's an interesting question. I, I, I'm, I'll i start off with saying, I think the majority of it is ego, right? Like ego runs rampant in poker because it's incredibly, uh, it's incredibly competitive. And that goes with any competitive sport. Ego is like the number one killer across the board. We can agree there, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's people not having the self-awareness to understand when it's someone trying to be constructive or if it's coming from a place of ego, right? And a lot of people want to be considered the best because of their ego. A lot of people want to crush someone because of their ego, etc. Like, I, I want Bill to crush Landon, not because it's Landon. Landon doesn't have much of himself here. Like, I'm indifferent to Landon. I don't hate him. I don't, I don't love him. I don't know him. But like, I, will, I love the underdog story. And let's not get it twisted. The past two matches that Hybrid Poker has taken on to coach, uh, to help with uh, the, the people playing, Daniel Negreanu, he was a dog. Bill Perkins, he is a dog, right? Like we're not looking for good spots. We're looking for, you know what? We're gonna take someone that's never played heads up before and we're gonna see how far we can get them in a month and a half. And I'm happy with our results. Here is a replay of that hand. Thank you, Train. So this was an open from uh, Landon with the uh, Ace Fiver and a call from Bill. And uh, the flop brings a wheel draw for Landon. He's still, of course, got that Ace and he's got the Ace of Spades. That's a pretty good board for him. Bill open checks and a check back from Landon. Okay, and then he makes great turn card. So he's probably been ahead on every street, presumably. Uh, and so, and then Bill opens for a pot size bet on the turn and Landon, of course, with the easy call. And Weird River, he does make aces up. Um, of course, any four makes the wheel. And uh, of course, good enough for a value bet though. 
from Landon, hoping to get called by maybe Queen X. And I'm assuming he did. Yep. Oh, Queens and Threes, actually. Wow. Man, okay, great flop for Bill, but then the runout was sub off. And uh, okay, that makes sense. Wow, I thought he might have had a queen, but queen three. I like the way that Landon played the hand uh, better than I like the way Bill played the hand. Because? Um, things. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on, let me write that down. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Sorry, I can't get too deep into it. But... I like that chat. It's 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 really cool today. It's definitely a special uh, uh, heads up match having MJ on here. But you can see just like how high level and like high stakes this is to where you know you kind of can't give away some of these little secrets, these things that are going on. Uh, so it's there's just so much on the line, and it's really cool now actually hearing a little bit more about the teams behind what everybody gets to see up front. This isn't just Bill and Landon like, oh, I get up, I, you know what I mean, scratch my head, I brush my teeth, let me go play uh, some heads up. There's like a lot going on here. So even just hearing a couple of these spots where MJ's like, mm, things, it's, it's actually really, really cool. So I hope everybody out there is really, you know, enjoying what we have going on because there, there's levels to this. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a quick little rundown of what our schedule is. So I wake up at 8.30 a.m. I spend half an hour with my daughter in the morning while she has breakfast. And then I call Perkins and I say, get the fuck on, let's go. We work for one to three hours. Then he'll take a 45 minute downtime break. He'll play this match. After, uh, we'll get on a, a half an hour call just to, time to discuss the emotions and how he felt he played and how he, how he felt he executed, et cetera. And then we'll have dinner and then we'll work for three to four hours at night, uh, running all the spots and making sure that he's up to, up to par for moving forward. And then it goes even deeper. The more hands we play, it's no longer just solved, right? Because GTO is just the baseline of exploitative, right? Like you, you're never gonna really deviate to exploit as dramatically as you potentially can if you don't understand the, the baseline of what GTO is executing. So now that we have more hands, we get to see the tendencies of Landon and his team. So now we get to try to capitalize on some things and vice versa. They get to do the same thing against us if Bill isn't executing some things appropriately. So there's a lot of work that goes into this. I, I honestly think that the actual play is only 10% of the work that goes in. Wow, that's sick. Bill did take down a nice little pot there on the right side table with the, uh, the old three pair kings over fours over eights or whatever that was that was a uh, plus eight in his direction and bill is uh, getting close to that zero mark he's at minus 21 overall for the challenge he is up 64k in today's session we've got about uh, 20 minutes left or so so we should get right up in that three 310 320 hand range as uh, as we did a couple of days ago so i told perkins that he's not allowed to end the session until he wins three buy-ins <laughs> <laughs> really? T like today specifically? Yeah, I said don't fucking come home unless you win three biomes. <laughs> that is funny. I like that. Uh, it's good. It's like uh, you know, you're like reprimanding your your wayward son. I don't want you walking in this front door until you bring me home and A on that report card now. Yeah. Right. It, you know, it's it's really cool to see this match play out the way it is, even over the, the, the three thousand hand sample. I want to make this incredibly clear. Landon is executing some very fucking sharp moves. Shit that I didn't think someone that only had two months to prepare is executing. Like we're seeing, like when, we, when we're working behind the scenes, we're like, oh fuck, he nailed that. And barely anybody knows that. Fucking kudos to him. And then so now because Landon is actually getting incredibly deep, we now have to push Bill even further and faster to go, we need to go deeper because he's executing on such a high level. We cannot let that pass. That river, so race, sick. that river race worked for Bill on that left side table. Shipping up. So this is really cool because uh, your perspective um, on, on this match here, MJ, there's also a side that I'm kind of connecting with a bit. It's like, you have to like, motivate bill you you have to kind of like keep him in the right headspace there's again just so much more going on you have to like figure out now you've i know you've had a long relationship you know a few years with bill you understand him as a 
student, aka like a student like player type, and you got to figure out how to manipulate him to do what you need him to do, right? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, we I sat down and had a conversation with Bill, and I said, if you want to do take on this challenge, and you expect us to work as hard, if not harder than you, I need you to take this seriously, and I want your word. I have known Perkins for a very long time. I have never seen him break his word once, not for anything tiny or huge across the board. And I said, I want your word. I want you to work as hard as you possibly can. And he showed up. You know, he he did Love that. So, but there are some times because you have a billionaire's mindset and you have multiple variables that you're juggling daily. There are some times when you get that text, "Come on, motherfucker, let's go. We can't sleep on this kid. He's too good." You know, let's fucking get it. Oh gosh, man, this this hearing this stuff, chat. If you're not like fired up watching this stream, hearing some insight from MJ, watching these high stakes, like you're into poker, man, I don't know how you get jazzed up. Like this is some like the stuff you're hearing from MJ and on this stream is just people would pay thousands of dollars to get this insight. Uh, so I really hope, chat, that today you're taking away some like big pieces making some notes because this is i am inspired i'm jazzed up i want to study right after this stream like i want to like get better i want to get in the lab like I'm, I'm i'm jazzed up big time so far i have written down the word things and then i've drawn a homer simpson face that's what my notes look like no 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 come on fuck off i i gave some really good information <laughs> on logistics and over betting and like I, I i will continue to drop some some hints on some very uh, high level information for you guys within the next 15 20 minutes i promise you i will make sure that you go home with five new things that you didn't know before and it also the more you know about heads up the more enjoyable it is to watch you know a lot of people like for example in this two bad pot ace ace 393 rainbow you actually are allowed to have some over bets you're not going to see it very often, but it's a low frequency. You have some, and you have a, a, a couple different sizes that you can use here. Um, so, but I promise you, I will give you some things to to, to leave with it that will make your your watching this more enjoyable. And you know what, Ghost of M points out that uh, you could uh, you, you could actually get the thousands of dollars to play MJ by winning the 5540K uh, after you win the ticket here. Uh, on the ACR stream, and thank you, that is a good point. Uh, if you type in a bet on Scott in the chat, that will enter you into the drawing. We are gonna pull uh, another winner here before the end of the show, along with uh, the MJ advice that has been promised. We will do another winner, maybe more. Very nice. What's up, Dan? Shout out to everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. It's been uh, such a cool stream so far, and we still have about 13 minutes. I think they've been pretty tight with the two hour time frame as far as today's match goes. Right, so I saw a couple, you know, I saw people saying, well, you know, what if Bill has lots of momentum? Would you advise that he sort of stopped despite the momentum? And I, I think that's the whole thing is we're stopping no matter what. Uh, define stop. Uh, well, I think, well, end this particular heads up match stream. No, absolutely not. If we're playing well and we're crushing, I, I don't care about the results as much as I care about his execution level. If he's executing, he feels good, I'm gonna push him to continue, right? I, I want this, I want them to play as long as possible when he's feeling good. And when he's feeling like shit and making mistakes that I'm gonna, you know, cause I, I've seen four mistakes since I've been on this stream. If I, if I see 10, I'm gonna be like, yo, 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 two hours, let's, let's, let's stop and regroup. But he's playing well. So uh, Just a Dad TV says that Perky has a great chance to win the challenge overall because his natural style translates well to heads up. You think that's true, MJ? Uh, no, uh, it's funny. It's counter. I, I would agree with you on paper before diving in with him. I'd be like, yeah, dude, he's just an aggressive motherfucker. He's just gonna fucking fire, fire. But then like really breaking down his game, it was like, oh no, he's not built for heads up at all. <laughs> so huh. we, we had to like build frameworks for him and he got it, man. Bill is a genius and a lot of people don't realize that because sometimes he's a bit space cadet -y, but he is an absolute <laughs> genius it seems I to be a, that I... it seems to be a trait uh, I, mean, I don't know if you picked up on this too drew of uh that sort of like it achieved an extraordinarily elite sort of life position guys like bill there's a sort of battiness uh um or what was the word you used mj it was a better word space cadet 
Yeah, right. That, 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 that's sort of like, which of course they are not really, you know, these are incredibly sharp driven individuals, but there does seem to be a correlation with that sort of life position achievement and a sort of space cadetness. What is that? I guess your mind is going a million miles no, a minute. I, I can tell you exactly why if you want me to. So with these really elite, highly successful guys, if you can picture them, picture them as racehorses. And you know how racehorses have blinders on. So they're, if when they're focused on something, they're hyper attentive, they are nailing it and everything else kind of falls by the wayside. For example, a very quick example of this is Bill and I had a prop bet where we were going to do a five minute comedy uh, a skit on stage and the people would vote and who was, whoever was the funniest would win 50K. Uh, and so the only rule was you can't practice in front of anybody, you can't share your routine. If you do, you lose. So last night, Bill was like, yo, by the way, I shared my routine with Doug Cole. And I said, well, okay, you obviously lose. And he was like, well, I don't think I necessarily broke the rules. And I said, okay, how about this? We'll let your wife, your fiance, arbitrate. And so she came back and she said, no, uh, MJ wins hands down. And then Bill goes, how much did we bet? He, he didn't know. He didn't care. He didn't remember. He didn't know. I said, we bet 50,000. And he goes, oh, okay, cool. He won't remember that conversation either. So in four months, I'll be like, yo, pay up. He's gonna be like, what are you talking about? That's what I mean by space cadet. Right. And you know what's uh, funny too? When I was uh, in the Thirst Lounge and I was learning and seeing, you know, for me, I, I was very, very intently like watching things uh, Bill was doing, the interactions we were having, because, you know, I think being around somebody like that, is an incredible opportunity to learn and grow and get some like awesome insight and one thing that i noticed and a lot of people would ask me you know what'd you learn from bill is i think these highly successful people that you can go like this guy's a genius and a space cadet it's he chooses where to invest his energy and it's like you know like a conversation we're having in a whatsapp it's like you have no idea or bill's twitter you have no idea what he is saying but he just is not investing energy in that it's not that important but when something is important he's saved all this energy and it goes in here boom genius like that's what i took the, away you hit the nail on the head like him on twitter or text messages versus him in our board meetings they're two different humans It's like one of the one of the points, uh, sort of classic uh, work smarter, not harder type points that I remember picking up from the four hour work week, the book back in the day, which is, you know, so many people sort of despite intelligence or because of it, end up spending 90 percent of their energy on 10 percent of the bull crap. Or, well, I forget what the exact thing was, but something about like, you know, the 10 percent of your worst clients are going to take up 90 percent of your time and energy. And the, so the sooner you can sort of figure that out and learn how because people's instinct is that the inefficiency. So it's like the, the, the bill types of the world have like figured out, uh, you know, workarounds, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if you if you want advice on that, I know it's unsolicited, but learn how to compartmentalize. You're only allocated X amount of neurons a day to fire at something. Make it count, compartmentalize what you're executing and what you're focusing on, right? Because if you just have, if you're trying to multitask, humans don't know how to multitask. We don't learn that way. We actually learn in the four stages of learning, right? And you guys can look that up. It'll be beneficial to you. But being able to compartmentalize and then allocate the, the neurons to each one individually instead of across the board, you're going to see an, an, a dramatic increase in productivity and efficiency. Bill making a uh, little pair, a little single pair on the right side table work efficiently for his stack in that hand. He did get to just check, check the river and take down, I think that was over 12K. Nice little pickup for a pair of fives. Scott, you're good, dude. You are absolutely good about bring, looping it right back to the match. You're a professional. I like you. Thanks, dude. <laughs> I like you too. I agree. I think Scott's really good at that. I agree. Uh, how, how long, uh, Scott, up to this point? Now, I know you said you had some uh, radio broadcasting experience, but how, I know you do a lot of commentating on the cage. Like how many, or how long have you been commentating on the cage? Uh, the first cage I did, I believe was in like middle of, uh, or early 2019. I can't remember if I did one in late 2018, but I did a, I did several of them in 2019. And then that one with you in January, 2020. So I think I did like five in a row. Um, and then I had been doing some poker streaming on uh, the very infamous Stone Stream before that. Um, so I mean, oh, this, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I put in a lot of hours on on that show as well. 
Um, and then, but it, it, it is interesting. It's like a, it's a combination of uh, things that kind of work in my, to my advantage because I have a lot of poker experience from just cash games and stuff over the years. Uh, and then my broadcast life, which was totally separate from the poker world. And it just happens to be a gig that like play, plays to my strengths, you know? So I, I always enjoy doing it. And it's been a long time off the air, man. You know, I really haven't done a stream since uh, since that cage, and it's I've missed Twitch, I've missed you guys, I've missed the uh, the online poker street. So it's nice to be back. Yep, you should see it was 67 from Landon quite often there. So that texture, Queen Jack 10 two hearts. Perkin is going to have a lot of bigger sizings. Uh, less frequent, he's going to have more checks, but he's going to have some bigger sizings. Less of the block sizing. And what I mean by, when I say sizings, plural, like we're gonna have some 27s, or you can even you can even use a third. 27 performs a little bit better than 33%, but you're gonna see some thirds and 27s. You're gonna see some 67s or two thirds. And sometimes you'll see 75, and sometimes you'll see pot and overbet. So we have two main dominant sizings that we're gonna use on the majority of textures, but we have a, a availability of four depending on the texture and the range. Going into this match, MJ, did you try to simplify the game tree at all for Bill, or so did you keep it? That's actually one of the main. That's a very good question, Drew. I, I'm really glad you asked that. That's one of the main things that Hybrid Poker has. Uh, we pride ourselves on over the last four years. Look, we have 30. So, uh, we have the. Excuse me, I'm getting a text. Okay. Uh, hey, MJ, let's let's table the answer real quick. Hold your thought. Let's watch this replay real quick. Uh, yep. Start over first train. Thank you very much. So Bill has an eight five of spades here, and uh, he does open and this is a three bet from landon bill wants to see a flop with his suited two gapper and he does make middle pair he faces a bet about a what is that a third pot bet or so yep, zero folds from bill zero folds yep we're going to continue with our middle pair uh suboptimal turn card brings in the flush check. another poker card should go check check very very often indeed you are right it is exactly what happens and he still is just left with those fives here on the river. We're gonna, I believe it went check, check on the river. Makes sense. We're gonna find out what Landon was working with. He turned an open ender. Okay, so yep, makes total sense. There you go. Both played the hand to perfection. Both played great. Right on. Uh, so please continue with the answer. Yeah, so uh, what was the question one more time? It, w it was uh, going into this match. Did you try to simplify the game tree? Oh, yes, 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 yes. So at Hybrid Poker, we have, we have 30 servers running 24 hours a day for the past four years, right? So like getting all that data was great, but useless if people don't know how to learn it, right? Because we can teach it, but that it's hard to learn. So what we did is we actually focused on the last two years, humanizing the information, making it easily regurgit regurgitated and easily uh, absor absorbing for you to be able to execute this. So yes, we've absolutely humanized and easified a lot of the information. And then once you get that, that framework of the, of the easification, then we go deeper because it can go as deep as you want. The solver is unreal. I think that is the word of the stream. Uh, easify uh, slash easification. That is a new uh, term to add to your guys's lexicon. You know, That's I, I, awesome. I'm actually enjoying myself. I wouldn't mind coming on ACR uh, regularly to, to commentate with you guys. What do you mean, actually? These are good streams. No, of course it's a good stream. <laughs> I'm just saying I, I typically, I hate the sound of my own voice, right? Like I personally just don't like it. And I, I never really enjoyed commentating, but I, I'm enjoying myself with you guys. I thank you, dude. Well, I'm just giving you crap. I always like I always uh, key in on that when people are like, you know, that's actually a good question. Just like, what the, what the hell do you mean actually? I know how to ask good questions. Because the majority of the time, questions aren't good. That's true. You're right about that. <laughs> You're right about that. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. It reminds me of a, of a book uh, Adam Carolla says he wants to write called I Thought Adults Would Be Smarter. Yeah. All right, cool. So we are about two hours in, everybody, to this heads up match. If you look in the bottom left, this session, Bill is currently up 68K and just down 17K on the total challenges. We're approaching 2,400 hands. 
We have a giveaway in the chat. Make sure you get involved here. The keyword is bet on Scott. We're going to be giving away another $55 ACR ticket very shortly. We are, and obviously, needless to say, MJ, I'm sure uh, Train and everyone will talk to you behind the scenes. We will absolutely take you up on that. The more you want to join us, the uh, the pleasure will be all ours. Yeah. Yeah, we are, uh, we are approaching the end of the line, as Drew mentioned. So we should just have a couple of few more hands here, and then uh, we'll call it a day. And are we still doing a Marbles uh, race train? After we do this last giveaway, are we going to do one more? Yes. Hey, look at that, guys. A 109 ticket coming up uh, for the uh, presumably the winner of uh, the Marbles race that we will do at the end of the stream. Let's watch the last couple of few hands here. And that might be it. Perky's sitting out. Last bet of the match, probably, from Landon. It's going to win him that pot. And we do end today's session with Perkins having made up a ton of ground. 68K he made in this session with some couple of big flips that went his way uh, and some great play. And there you go. There are the stats for uh, today and overall. And Perkins is right near the zero mark. Huge come up for, for Bill today. Are you guys interested in having Perkins come on after the session to do an interview or talk about the match? Nah, nah. I got to go, like, uh, you know, water some plants. All right, cool. <laughs> of course, dude. <laughs> we would love that. Yeah, man. Yeah, that would be amazing. All right, let me call him right now. Let me call him. All right, so while we, uh, while MJ... Uh, well, I, I guess we should maybe not do the marbles just in case Bill wants to hop on quickly here. So, uh, hey, Bill. Are we... yeah. Hey, hop on ACR stream. I'll have a link texted to you. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is a this is a good stream. You're, you'll enjoy it. Okay. All right, cool. I'll have a link text to you immediately. Okay. All right. So while we wait for that, let's do this uh, this last giveaway. Do you want to pull a winner there, Drew? Yep. Go ahead. Let's get it going here, everybody. Good luck. $55 ticket going out to the chat in just a minute here. We're going to have Ghost. Uh, you'll see the uh, winner pop up in the chat there. But the stream just gets better. We're going to get some post-game insight from Bill. For those of you who might just be tuning in or are not aware, MJ Gonzalez is Bill's coach. MJ is a high stakes player. He's currently in the middle of his own heads up battle with uh, Dan Smith. And it's just been an incredible day on the stream. I, I feel like I woke up to like, this is like a poker Christmas for me personally. So uh, yeah, Chad, I hope you've been enjoying it. We're gonna get Bill on here for some post game discussion. I wanna need so all the hands. Well, that'll be fun. If this is poker Christmas for you, Drew, you know, if you, you, for, you leave like milk and cookies for Santa. What do you leave out for poker Santa? Oh, geez. Poker Santa? <laughs> yeah. Dang, buddy. I, I I don't even know. That's a good question. I'm going to have to think about that. I'm trying to think of what I would order table side most often, like wonton noodle soup, something like that, or like like a, a, a Mongolian beef. You, hey, if, if you know that I'm, I'm the Santa coming through, then that's a good play. For sure, leave, yeah. leave that Chinese food, the Mongolian beef, all that out. Santa Drew wants noodles. Take your milk <laughs> and cookies and take it off a short pier, man. I, obviously, oh, looks like oh, we're getting Can you filmed. hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you see me now? What's up, fish cakes? What's up, fish balls? How you guys doing? <laughs> hey, you didn't suck today. That's good. Well, I mean, I ran a little better and I didn't suck. I made a couple of mistakes where I was definitely aware of them. And, and I, I was a little um, confused where he had 6-8 and I had 4-6 and I was like kind of thinking it through. And I was like, well, I got trip sixes with a straight blocker here. And I just got so caught up on a straight blocker I called, but I, I don't know if it was right or wrong. I just, we'll, we'll go over that one privately for sure. Okay. <laughs> Seems like he's under bluffing there, but whatever, you know? Yeah, Bill, we, I think we you played great. You did play great, especially after those two coolers with the Kings. Uh, and then I think it was like two, one or two hands later that 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 sixes ha hand happened. And yeah, to come yeah. back uh, and have a great spin up after those two coolers back to back was was great tenacity. We did we did replay that that hand with the trip sixes. And we were, we I'm glad you explained the reasoning behind the call on the river. 
And uh, like going back, I mean, you know, is he ever, Drew, Drew had floated the notion, oh, maybe he's, you know, he's got 8X top boat blocker and he's turning it into a bluff. But the more we thought about it, the, the more we were like, what is he doing this with that's not a full house? Yeah, I, I, he just, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been playing Wizards and they have a lot of bluffs, <laughs> right? And they, they actually have the bluffs, right? With the, with the, the streak cards and stuff like that. And you know, I just don't think he has that many bluffs there. And I, I think, like, when I look back on it, I think it was a fold. I don't know what I was thinking. You know what I mean? I just got caught up on a straight blocker uh, in that scenario. I think I could have called with, um, I mean, I think there's one other hand maybe I could have called with, but I don't want to get too into it before my coach yells at me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, so, Bill, describe your mindset after that, that sixes hand, those back-to-back -back coolers. Where were you at mentally? Oh, I can, I can read it because I talk to myself and I take notes. And um, I think it says, cock sucking motherfucker, cock sucking. <laughs> but uh, I, think, I, I think that's pretty what my, my notes, but I'm going to go read them. Hold on. Uh, uh, so that's, that's technical jargon. Uh, yeah, that's technical Bill jargon. Perkins. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Oh, it was, there was also a scumbag thrown in there and a couple of motherfuckers. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, it was a lot of technical jargon going on there. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm just going to get smushed today. You know, I just resolved to getting destroyed, you know? Let me Perkins, I got a question for you. How did you fill in four bet pots today? There was a significant amount of. I actually felt a lot better. Um, you know, the pot sizes were. were you know, the stack sizes were shrinking and I think I was using the proper bet sizing. And I think my range, the, my range and my hand selection within my range was doing exactly what it should be based on the role I was rolling. And that's as far as I'm probably gonna go into it without the coach yelling at me. <laughs> Guys, have you ever heard Bill Perkins talk like this in your entire life? What a no. world we live in. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, they, you know, I'm an old dog. I can learn new tricks. Uh, I think prior, I was pretty adverse to like actually learning to play at, at a competitive level, just learning to like not get smushed, right? But, uh, you know, I, we put in a lot. I put in some time, you know, I've had three months and with an accelerated learning system, plug for hybrid poker, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you, like, you, you, learn, uh, you, learn, you learn quickly. You know what I mean? You learn quickly. I have Bill, I gotta ask you, how do you grade your play today? I'm curious if MJ's grade would match yours. Um, I gotta subtract the results out of it. I, I honestly think I was a B minus today. Um, partially because, mainly because of the six four hand, right? Uh, and then there were a couple spots where um, I missized C bet on the flop. Um, you know, there, it was like mandatory uh, larger size and I bet the smaller size, et cetera. And it's just a function of like something interesting is going on at the other hand and I'm using all my neurons for this and the clock is ticking down. And I'm like, oh fuck, you know, click. And then uh, not, not taking the extra neuron to go, wait a minute, yeah, you're betting, but what size are you doing? And so for those errors, I give myself a B minus. I actually don't think this was my best played game. Like, ironically, my best played game, I lost the most money. Very, oh. very sharp. Well, so we had talked about this a little bit uh, on the on the last uh, stream a couple of days ago, and we wondered if he, uh, uh, MJ had confirmed that this was something you guys had discussed, which which was the timing. We noticed your bet timing a couple of days ago got uh, significantly uh, quicker, clicking those buttons quicker after maybe the first 20 minutes. You, there was a couple you were kind of cruising, and then a couple pots didn't go your way, and we noticed you making moves noticeably quicker. MJ mentioned you guys had talked about that. How, how front of mind was was your uh, timing today? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely front of mind. I knew I, I, it, that did happen because I was just like, just like, a, like on a little mini tilt, and I think my timing suffered while I was on mini tilt. Uh, and then also like the music got into like this jamming thing when I was kind of on mini tilt, and I was like fucking clicking. I was like, oh wait a minute, timing, you know? And then it came back, and I was like, oh, I need to slow down here, you know? <laughs> but uh, you know that it's 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 hard, you know. Being stoic about things uh, that you've been putting a lot of time and effort into and, and, and seeing things like that, it's a, it's a little disturbing, but eventually, you know, you have a spike of adrenaline and whatever emotion, and then it goes back down and you get back into your game, you know? You know, I need to probably practice, especially with a game that I, I haven't 
played much of much of at all. You know what I mean? Like I haven't played that much heads up poker at all. And I probably need a couple like, oh, take a breather, like take extra, even waste 10 seconds off the clock if I have to, to, to like get, um, get myself back to steady state. So there you go. You guys heard it here. Uh, mostly it is the uh, dubstep that is to blame for the uh, quickness <laughs> of the button clicking. <laughs> you just got to switch to like Riders on the Storm or something. So you know? Exactly. Like there's a song in his jam and I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, to speak on the emotional side, Perk, how do you feel now being down only less than one buy-in in the match? Does that affect you at all? Because I know you know how we approach it. We don't give a fuck. But how, how does that affect you, if at all? I mean, it... It feels good. It feels like I'm in there. Um, you know, it's you, you, you generally like we're human beings, right? And when you do good work, you expect to be rewarded, right? You go to work, you do your job, you expect to get paid, right? It's not like that in heads up, right? Like I think like my best games, you know what I mean? I was playing, I'm down like two vines or down whatever. And I'm just like, fuck, you know, I didn't get paid. I went to work for a whole week, no paycheck. And so, um, overall I'm good. I feel, I feel good about where I am, but there is that part of me that has been entrenched, right? Like over years and years of years of do good work, get paid. And the fact that I'm down that I still feel a little salty about, you know, I'm not, I'm not afraid to admit it. Yeah, of course. All right. How do you, like, we... land, how do you like land inside everybody? Do you guys, do you guys love land inside? I mean, from their perspective, they're supposed to be up, you know, six buy-ins by now. I don't know. I mean, he's playing well. I mean, I don't want to. I don't. I don't know about the betters. Like, uh, I don't know how the betting side is is thinking, right? But as far as landing showing up uh, prepared to play, like they have to be happy with that. Like they cannot be like, oh, I'm upset with Landon. Like, no, fucking Landon's coming in tough, right? Um, um, I just want everyone to know this: Landon is performing at an elite level with only two months of work behind him. It is incredible. He deserves every ounce of respect for this. Yeah. And so what I think the betters got wrong is who was, who, who was going to show up as his opponent, you know? And so I, I, can, I can tell you they got that wrong, right? How wrong? I don't know. I don't know. But I know they got that wrong, right? Because I didn't even know who was going to show up, right? I didn't know if I was going to put in the time to study, right? Or care or be like, ah, fuck it, you know? I'll just quit mid-match and pay the penalty. Like, you know, I put in enough time and I put enough money on the match in order to incentivize me to do the work. And so I think they got that wrong. They they missed gotta, they missed they misread the incentives. I got a question for you, Bill. MJ brought this up uh, earlier about how going into the match because we had some light shine down a little bit on the fact that like you and Landon are out there in the streets doing battle but you guys have your teams who are also you know doing battle behind the scenes and MJ had mentioned that like he asked for a certain level of commitment from you so and you just mentioned there how you were like oh whatever midway through I'll just pay the penalty but does this feel um do you feel more motivated knowing that like MJ is like on your back like Bill you got to do this you got to be here we're, we're going to put in the work and now you have to take your energy from these other things and put it into this. Is that like motivating you? Are you like, you know what yeah. I mean? Well, well, it's actually, it's actually, I think, I think even more so like, uh, like when it was just me, like when it's my own money, like you can see that, like when I'm playing on TV or it's all my money, I can goof off and have fun. And I'm not really concerned about anything. I don't owe anybody anything, right? Except to myself. And if I want to goof off, I'll goof off. When, when these guys, you know, MJ and Matt are both very busy coming out with a product, right, by September, right? And I'm taking time away from them to work on their product that they're delivering, right? That That is like kind of like their life's work, right? Like the culmination of their life's work. And so I feel a very, very strong obligation to them to show up, right, and do the work, right? Within, within my priority set, right? Like, so I, I definitely have higher priorities, but within those priority set, you know, they're high up there, right? Like if I tell you, hey, I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna do work, you know, or I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z, and you're, you're, you're sacrificing your time, you'd be rest assured, I'm fucking showing up unless, you know, the value system that we both agree is interfering. And so that's probably the biggest motivator. Love to hear that, love that. 
Well, we didn't want to keep you too long, Bill. We enjoyed watching you. We're, we're uh, waiting with bated breath to watch the last of this, the, the, the rest of the match unfold here. So where, where's your head at going into uh, session number seven? I mean, I feel pretty good. Um, I, I mean, there are some spots in the game tree that I want to like sharpen up, but you know, I don't, I don't want to accelerate too much, right? Like the, the significant spots, you know, the two bed pots and blah, blah, blah. These things are going to happen. Th those, those, those areas in the game tree, which happen the most frequently, I want to master them, right? But I do have some uh, some weaknesses and some like secondary spots that do show up that I need. I want to like plug some leaks or some plug plug some holes in it, right? And I, I don't think I'm making that many direct e EV mistakes. I think I'm making frequency mistakes, right? Like I, even when I bet the wrong size. It's allowed, right? It's allowed. It's just preferred, you know. There, there's some, there's some smaller size allowed, but I didn't roll it and I didn't do it. So, on my score sheet, it's going to show up as a frequency mistake, not an EV mistake, right? Um, I think the four six might be a direct EV mistake. I'm not sure. You know what I mean? Um, but you know that that's what I want to do. Is like if all my mistakes are frequency mistake, frequency mistakes, we're we're doing pretty good. Um, and and that's. And, you know, that's how, that's how, that's why I feel good. And, and I, I, you know, there's always room for improvement. Even if I was the best heads up player in the world, I would still, there's still room for improvement. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, let's just do a quick uh, final uh, speculate, pure speculation uh, on where we think Landon's head is at. I mean, you tagged him for 70 K almost today. You, you, uh, you know, you, you got almost back to basically zero for the overall challenge. And while he is mature and as you, we all haven't seen he's, he's a wizard he's still 21 man you know so where do you think his head is at i mean uh, i mean I, I would i would if i were him i would be nervous not nervous on my skill set but nervous that the outcomes for whatever reason it shouldn't matter but it has like a um an outsized impact on his career path right and what goes on and and, and just maybe even public perception right so I, I think that has to be leaking into his his head, right? Of what's going on. That being said, Land is playing very fucking well. Uh, so he's got to be like, hey, I'm playing very well. I'm probably playing better than Bill. I'm I'm gonna smash him, or I'm gonna I'm I'm eventually gonna win. Like over time, I'm going to win. But it 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 it, it does have to be concerning, right? Like if I lose, so fucking what? You know what I mean? I show up, I play the game, I lose, right? Uh, it, that that's not necessarily the same for Landon. As a matter of fact, winning, aside from the money, it might be worse for me, right? Like it might be like, yeah, we're well, not going to invite you to this game, or no, you don't get this heads up opportunity with this person, <laughs> right? Like it might be bad for me. So it, it's it's there, but I mean, the competitive juices in me have gotten going. My ego has gotten going, so I, I I feel a want to win, right? And the want to play well and the want to do it, and I'm pretty sure that. His ego has the want to win, and he's also aware of the like kind of, you know, results don't matter necessarily on the poker table, like it is what it is, but it does matter in the public arena. Makes sense. Yep. Yeah, I, well, th I think he, uh, I think he's unfazed at this point in time. I think it's way too early in the match. I think he's going to stay confident, and he's just going to execute. Like he has shown so far in his career that he's that he is able to compartmentalize and be objective. So I think right now, because it's still early, I don't think he has a worry in the world. That may change very soon because Bill is only going to get better. Landon will get better too. And we'll see whose team uh, outperforms the, uh, the other team. So we'll see. Well, Ben, Bill, you know, if you do it, if you do end up outperforming him and you, you ruin your reputation as dead money, you know, I can see how that would really be trouble for future poker games. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be trouble. I mean, yeah, like, I like, like Landon's got a good team. He's doing, he's doing a lot of sharp shit. Um, and you know, the, the, the wager is, is like, you know, it was, I never looked at this as like, I got to beat Landon. I look at this as like a golf course and I'm taking a quiz and I'm, I'm playing against myself. Landon's just a guy on the other side of the table. He's just a wizard or he could be, God, he could be the GTO machine with infinite computing power and whatever. I'm playing against that and I just need to play, right? And that's, and that's it. That's the bottom line. So it's not, you know, it's not me versus Landon, right? It's me versus myself is the way I look at it. 
So there you go, Landon. If uh, if the if the sounds of our voice reach you, you are an interchangeable cog in Bill's life story. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, hey, dude. Thank you so much for joining us there, Bill. That was re really cool, and we, we've had a blast watching in. Uh, you know, best of luck uh, going forward in these matches, dude. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. You guys have a good day. Right on. Awesome job today, Bill. We'll catch up with you later. Okay. See you, Bill. Um, so I guess we're not going to do marbles, uh, right, uh, Train? I think we're just going to do the 109 uh, uh, giveaway in the chat with Nightbot. So uh, we are picking a fun Perkins keyword. And uh, so we'll, uh, as we wrap this up and give away the win. Did we do the second giveaway? Did we pull a winner for the other one? I, I believe we did do the second one. So I think we're on the uh, 109 giveaway right now. Okay, cool. So let's do that. And uh, there is the stats um, for the overall challenge plus today's uh, session. So that, that was really cool. Tons of awesome insight. MJ, we really appreciate you joining us too, man. That, that, was, that was really cool. Thank you for your, uh, your candid conversation. We appreciate it a lot. No problem, boys. Amazing. I'm out of here. I'll see you. All right. We'll Thanks, see Thanks, MJ. Soon. Cheers, brother. Thank you to Train for setting that up um, and uh, all of the behind the scenes production is courtesy of the one and only Fat Train and uh, thank you to ACR for uh, hosting us here and providing this platform for this very cool challenge. It was real, oh, wow. And we're getting a, a what is this? Like a shimmy shim courtesy of, uh, courtesy of Bet on Drew. Taking advantage. Yeah, buddy. Taking advantage of it. Sexy. We only have like a few seconds before Sexy Hands Train fixes this. <laughs> Ooh, baby all right so do we let's pull, the, let's pull the 109 winner did we do that let's do that uh, i think the keyword is let's see did ghost type it i thought it was dead money or somebody had mentioned that okay yeah so oh so we have to do the 55 ticket first everybody oh so yeah so let's do that go ahead the winner for that one after the bet on scott so we're going to pull the bet on Scott one right now. There it is. For the it 55 is jo ticket. Jolie Poker has won that Let's one. Let's go. Congratulations, Jolie, Jolie, Jolie Poker. Poker. And uh, nice. now dead money. Put in dead money. One word into the chat, and we will give away a 109 ticket courtesy of ACR. And uh, what do you say? You want to, like, count it down from uh, from 10 or something here, Drew? I don't know. What's your What's your method? Yeah, that's cool. Let's see. 451. Um, we'll give it about a minute or so chat. Type dead money into the chat. Congrats, Jolie Poker. That's uh, actually pretty funny. It's my girlfriend, Scott. Did you know that? Oh, I didn't. Rigged. Is it really? <laughs> rigged. rigged. So rigged. Team freaking pro, man. What is this? Unbelievable. I know. I know. Hey, um, how, how long are you guys together? Uh, for a few months now. Yep. Cool, man. Where'd you meet? Yeah. Uh, we actually met through twitch really to be to really be yeah now was she then, viewing your stream or you were you viewing hers i would say she's was viewing my stream she doesn't stream or anything like that but she's in the um community you know the communities that i'm around here mm -hmm. and whatnot and we kind of just you know started talking and stuff and here we are wow look at that love, yeah. love connections made on twitch that's great I know, all right, right. last of the uh of the giveaway here guys getting dead money and uh let's let's do this man let's counter down you ready okay yep uh we're gonna give you guys a 10 second countdown and then we're gonna pick the winner for the 109 ticket and if you're interested in some post heads up match activities i'm actually live on my stream right now and oh, uh, i'm sweet. gonna be playing and an MTT session here. So if you want to hang out there, we will uh, be there with you. Right on. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Ben Andrew. I'm sure we could probably give you the host after this. So hang around and uh, check out Drew's stream. If you don't mind, let's count it down, guys. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Who the winner? Who the winner? Bang, bang. The winner is Sam Wise. Sam Wise. Hey, Sam Wise. A reg. Well deserved. Enjoy the 109 ticket. See if you can just, uh, you know, bang off a win. That would be cool. Spin that up. Sam Wise, nice job. Congratulations. Congratulations to all the winners on today's show. 
Congrats, everybody. And we really appreciated the company. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Today was a special show and I had an amazing time. Scott is so easy to hang out, talk poker with. Energy is just great. So this was an awesome show today. I really appreciate uh, everything. Likewise, right back at you, dude. Appreciate you. Always have a blast hanging out and uh, calling some cards with you. Thank you again to Bill Perkins uh, and MJ Gonzalez for joining us. That was a real treat. And uh, we're excited to see you next time. Hey, good luck on the uh, stream today, man. I'll be tuning in for show. Thanks, buddy. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. See you guys next time. Thanks, Drain. Bye. See you guys.